Good afternoon, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. It is. Oh, where am I at here? It is Thursday, April the 11th, 2024. So, Technical Alpha Podcast, glad you could join us today. Hope you're have, uh, having a good week and you had a, last, a good last week. Good Lord, we were. Uh, Almost able to do last week, and uh, but I was that was that one was on me. I was required to be on call, uh, to be able to uh, to uh, pick up M on short notice because our hospital is falling apart <laughs> literally, literally, and figuratively. Uh, it was falling apart, they were doing a bunch of construction on it, continuing to, um, actually do a bunch of construction on it, and uh. They done fucked up. They hit one water main, and then they hit a second water main. Mm. And they they only had two water mains going into... They had a 100% accuracy on water main hitting on the, uh, on the, uh, the campus that, uh, that M's Ward was on. So they had no water for anything, uh, no toilets, no nothing... Uh, they had two, they were generous though, Mr. Black, they had two, count them, two, porta-potties for the entire ward. <laughs> out front, where you drive and drop people off, so you're taking a shit out front <laughs> while people are just freely moving in and out of the fucking ward, and it's a psych ward too, right? So people are just cursing and squaring and screaming at absolutely nothing. So you're just outside while people are just, you know, doing their, doing their thing while, uh, you know, while you're doing yours. And, uh, so it was quite an experience, but, uh, yeah, not the best. And the greatest irony, of course, is that, uh, you can see a sports field not far from there, right? And on the sports field, they've got like 30 fucking porta potties But then at the hospital, they can only spring for two. <laughs> For, like, the whole fucking hospital. So just a complete five-alarm fire. So anyway, uh, that was... And that was after they had a a patient, of course. Um, what did they do? They, like, whipped... They, like, rolled up the blanket. So, you know, in a, is this being a psych ward, you know, the, the fire... Um, sprinklers, they're not a regular one, right? Like, they're not, like, the ones that you'd see that are, like, the drop-down, spiky little circle thing. They're not like that, because it's something for people to, you know, suspend from, should they choose. Uh, and so, these are flush mount to the ceiling, uh, that are in these rooms. But apparently, if you hit them hard enough, just like any, uh, just like any of them, uh, they'll still go off. And so this person, uh, wound up betting and fucking whoosh, Indiana Jones that shit. And because they were being behavioral little dickheads and down it pops and out comes like water from God knows what era. Cause it hadn't been, the, the sprinkler hadn't been set off in like decades. So that water is prehistoric. It was black. I like black water came out of this thing. Actually, you know what? Ask your mom. Because M saw your mom. That she was one of the people that had to come up during this. And M was like, everyone showed up. Everyone. When this thing popped off, they had 78 departments show up at the same time. There was six inches of water on the floor. Complete fucking mess. So half the ward is already closed off. They had to send patients to, like, a totally different place, complete gong show, and then they hit two water mains and shut the water off to the whole fucking building. So there's just... It was a mess. So and all that is to say, that's why we weren't here last week. I needed to be able to, uh, to go and get M all through the podcast time, and so we just kind of pushed it, pushed it from there. Uh, but, uh, nevertheless, yeah, a bit of a absolute five-alarm fire, to say, uh, to say the least. Um, but, uh, yeah, real, a real fucking mess. The nurses were salty, though, because, you know, when they call, they have codes, right? Like, you, like, you know, code blue, code white, code fucking whatever. The code for, like, hazardous, you know, whatever is what they had to call when the water main, well, when the, when the water went off and it was black everywhere. And so, 
they, uh, when they called that, like I said, like every fucking department on earth showed up in like 14 seconds. She said she's never seen a response so fast in all of her life. But like the same week when they called a different code, I can't remember what code it was, but it was for like a violent, you know, violent patient. She said, literally, <laughs> nobody showed up. And the nurses were left to their own devices. So they were like, shows you where the priorities are. Got some water that came out of the ceiling? Oh shit, better call literally fucking everyone. Uh, but when the nurses' lives are in danger, nay, nobody give a fuck. So, uh, it's been quite a, quite a last, uh, quite a last few, uh, few weeks. Bit of a, of a literal five alarm fire. Uh, but nevertheless, we are here, we're back, we got uh, a little bit of news that we can go over, uh, kind of a slow couple, because we're moving in, of course, to, uh, uh, to, uh, to the spring lead up to, uh, the, the typical summer game fest extravaganza, but there has been some stuff that's been going down, and then, you know, just some typical stuff to chat about, the stuff that we're good at, which is talking about absolutely fucking nothing. It's what we're best at. You know what I did, though, Mr. Blank? I finally updated the Twitch page. It no longer has the original shit on it. So now the offline page, the description boxes, mm. hashtag third guy, God bless him. He is no longer being advertised. We salute you, Panic, but you are no longer being advertised <laughs> against your will on the, <laughs> on the Twitch page. <laughs> you are gone now. Uh, but yeah, uh, anyway, that was, that was mostly, mostly my week was, was that with M and then, uh, playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when I wasn't doing my fancy new, uh, job, uh, which is off and on. This last week was actually a reasonable number of hours, which was nice, uh, but this week so far has been absolutely dead. Like, nothing. All the projects that I did last week are now wait on other people to do shit, and now I don't have anything to do. So I've been playing some more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And, uh, getting pretty far into that, you know, 90, I'm 90 hours in now. It's a long game if you do all the side content, which is what I've been doing so far. I wanted to experience it all, and so, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a lengthy boy. I don't, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna commit that it's worth the 90 hours, but it's a lengthy boy. Either way, uh, for sure. And that's been about my week. Mr. Black, most important question of the week. How was your week? Oh, it's just another week, man. Just been busy. Just How's the RP? It's good. Two thumbs up from Siskel and Ebert. Yeah, yeah, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Things are good. Content's going good. Um Have the guns entered the servers yet? Did that happen yet? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're they're around. Um they're around. So th things are picking up. I've been yeah, I've just been streaming a lot. Um, mm. I'm on kick a lot now too. So I saw that. Um, I did I see your parents doing a Gamba stream. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I'm with, uh, yeah, I'm with, uh, I, I partnered up with Steak. Yeah, yeah. And um, so we've been we've been doing some Gamba. A mom and I, we always play slots and stuff. By of ourselves. course. Like when she comes yeah, yeah. over, we that's what we do. It's our thing. <laughs> and uh, I said, "Fuck it, man, let's set it up." So I set up the old podcast computer. I got like a new set set up in the yeah, yeah, yeah. Room, and then yeah, yeah. we uh we that computer it, we still turns on. Saturday. It still turns on, dude. The amount of drivers and shit I had to update and fucking I mean oh, I had bro. to like, reinstall so much shit. It took <laughs> it took hours just to get this thing to you know. To not well, it hasn't run, been like, turned on in what three yeah. years, so yeah. it's a miracle it even turned on at all. Yeah. Uh, That's but funny. Yeah, no, it uh, it was it's been a, it's been a decent <laughs> week. Um, yeah, just been just been on the on the grind. So, That's oh, it. hold on, Mr. Black is low. I'll turn him up the last thirty percent, just hey. to make sure. Oh, you know what? I could also do. I bet you it's also this. One second, it's not it's not your end. I think it's mine. Uh, let me turn that off. All right, that that I wasn't sure if that would affect the audio. That's interesting. So I have I have a um. It's not really a DAW per se, but it's a it's a thing that sits over top of Windows Audio that allows you to run an equalizer uh, on Windows Sound, and uh, and so it allows you to do like what. So if you're listening to music or something and you want like an EQ profile or whatever, because Windows doesn't have one natively, it allows you to do that stuff. And then it also has like this really in-depth thing where you can do a hearing test with your headphones that you use, and it sees 
and you can do it per ear and what what frequency deficiencies you have because you know hearing loss and whatnot over time uh, and I know my right ear is fucked compared to my left, so I was interested, so I did it. And it's really neat because it allows you to take that profile and turn it into an EQ profile that then, uh, like, accommodates that frequency loss per ear so that it normalizes both ears to being able to hear the same volume at every frequency. Uh, and it's kind of fucking shocking how different everything sounds when you do that, It's especially if you have, like, certain frequencies that are fucky. Um, and so that was neat. So anyway, that was on, and I bet you that was part of it, because you have to, when you turn up, like Jeff would know doing music, you turn up, let's say, 7,000 kilohertz, 3 or 4 dB, everything else staying the same, you still have to turn the overall mix down, because if there's anything in the mix that, that pushes 7K, it's gonna blow the fucking speaker out, and so you have to, like, down, you know, volume down on the mix. So that's why he was probably quiet, is because it was turned on. So I turned that off. That'll get Mr. Black back to his normal, everyday scheduled programming. But that's great. Gamba stream with the parents. Goals. I haven't done that yet with mom and dad. That's the real goal. Get get Jan and Dan. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? No. That'd be, that'd be so funny. I'd love it. I, dad would do it in a heartbeat. I'd tune I don't know, in. But, I'd uh, tune yeah. in for it. <laughs> That's for sure. I'd be there. Mom playing like blackjack or something. It would be no. so funny. Oh, shit. That'd be funny as hell. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's get to some gaming news. That is, a, that is definitely an entertaining thought, though. Um, it finally happened. We talked about this a couple months back or several months back at this point, I believe. The lead time was pretty substantial. I want to say we heard about this in the fall. Uh, but Nintendo has officially... Excuse me, Nintendo has officially shut down any online services for the 3DS and Wii U games. Uh, they mentioned this, like I said, many months ago now, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, they, they said, hey, heads up. So any online services for both of those platforms are now gone. However, digitally owned titles and patches for those titles are still uh, going to be available for what they say, like, and I quote, for the foreseeable future. Which, of course, means, like I have in my notes, that could be 20 years. Could be 20 days. We don't fucking know. I don't know if they know. I think they're just leaving it open-ended. Uh, a little bit of, you know, see how she goes. See how long we want to support, you know, this, this content uh, on servers. But it does sound, at the very least, with that wording, it does sound like it's not going to be next week. You're going to be safe for some time. That being said, there are there are more than a few games in which apparently their entire DLC libraries are gone. So, for example, uh, Dragon Quest VII, apparently the DLC, gone entirely. And so people having known that ahead of time, some users have been uh, spent a lot of time before yesterday downloading everything that they could and data dumping it so that it can be saved for the future. Because it's gone. A lot of that shit's gone. So, anyway, um, this is part of our main discussion for this week. There's not a lot of news, Mr. Black. Springboard's off of some stuff. I thought I'd, I'd get a little creative with it and give you an opportunity to ask you a couple of questions. So after you're, mm -hmm. uh, after, after you're uh, done reading your business email, we are going to take over the, uh, the Southern Hemisphere and the real estate market. Uh, I can give you, I can give you a question. I can see, I can oh, see, uh, I can see you going... <laughs> <laughs> like reading to your, reading to yourself. <laughs> like you ever watch a movie or like a TV show, and there's like that one actor that has to also say the lines of everyone else in the scene before their lines come up. It's like they're standing in the background. And you can see them going, mouthing like every word the person actually fucking at that was, for a moment. That's what you look like. You're sitting. <laughs> <laughs> ah. But yeah, so the Wii U and 3DS gone. Uh, in terms of online stuff, we know at some point in the future they're going to get rid of everything, including digitally owned games that people have downloaded from the service that did, that weren't part of, like, you know, physical purchase. Uh, and as we discussed before, actually, I believe when this topic first came up, when they announced this, um, this brings up, you know, the discussion around people not really owning the, ga the games these days if they're digital. That you don't really own them. Like, they say that you do, but you're more or less just licensing them for a period of time. The verbiage is never 
put that way in reality they you know they 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 just kind of they own they they usually bought and owned uh labels but in reality you don't really at least not in the ways that you would if you actually had a physical copy of something and so i i decided to look into this a little bit because this discussion came up i'm interested on your thoughts about this mr black because when we talked about this last time, you know, your stance on this, if I remember correctly, was, well, I don't think, I think you said that, you know, and, and it's true, at least for now, and that's why I was thinking about this, majority of people don't, I don't, you know, they don't think you care very much uh, about this at the end of the day, because they play a game, they put it down, and then they don't, you know, it's whatever, they don't go back to it, and so if they lose it, you know, five years later, they don't care all that much. Uh, however, so I wanted to look into this, because... I know for us, we grew up with physical. You've got a whole wall of it behind you. And then we lived through the, the times in which we've been moving more and more digital. And I thought about it and I thought to myself, I wonder how much of this shift to digital, you know, when people, when, when companies come out and say, oh, X percent of our sales are digital this year, which is up X percent from the year before versus physical copies. I wondered how much of that was generational and how much of that also would be attributable to the publishers kind of forcing people out of other options because more recently you see this more aggressively where microsoft is pulling physical copies of their games from retail stores wholesale they're not even there and so when they do that and then they say oh well digital when this is for microsoft accounted for like 90% digital for Microsoft. And you're like, well, okay, yes. Some people like the convenience and whatnot, but also they didn't have the option to buy physical in the, in the first place. It wasn't there. And so I looked into it a little bit, saw what I could dig up. Of course, some stuff data-wise is hard to surface unless you pay a ton of money to a couple of the uh, uh, of specific companies that, that keep these kinds of numbers, but some of them are surfaced online for us plebeians. So as it turns out, millennials, skewing on the younger side, but up to about our age, Mr. Black, on the millennial scale. And Gen Z, starting at around age 25 and in that pocket, are showing a pretty dramatic increase in wanting physical media in books and movies specifically, but games are starting to come up as well. The studies are looking at it from the standpoint that we're discussing, where it's like they kind of want to own their thing. They like the idea of it. And there is a nostalgia factor, even if they didn't experience it. The best way I can put it is you and I didn't technically grow up in the 80s. We were born in the 80s, but we didn't grow up in the 80s. But when we watch something from the 80s, we can still feel a certain kind of nostalgia. There is a, there is a faux nostalgia attachment to that. This generation is now looking at the 90s that way. You're seeing 90s clothing fucking like nobody ever nobody should wear 90s clothing as people who lived in the 90s don't do that there was not a fashionable fucking millisecond in the entire decade shit was crazy everyone was coming off of cocaine don't do it it's bad but it's coming back and they're interested I now think, hey man i think i think i think the hip-hop culture had some pretty cool some pretty I mean, there's only so fits, much man. oversized Sean John not to pull out, yeah, you know, a guy's I, name that probably shouldn't the be windbreaker, around. Windbreaker, you know, the windbreakers <laughs> with the crazy, uh, you know, the colors. There's this guy that I saw on social media. I think it was on Instagram. <laughs> and he was taking, like, old ass, um, like, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or um, old Disney type movies, uh, like taking old blankets and stuff and then turning, converting them into like, um, uh, jackets. Yeah. And yeah. it looks like Aladdin. It looks fire as fuck. Like there's some, there's some <laughs> cool shit that's been coming back from the nineties, man. But how much is that as nostalgia? Because like the, the pink and lime green windbreaker shit. I mean, we look at it now, we're like, yeah, that's fire. But like for the last like 15 years previous, I don't think people were looking at that going, hell yeah, bring back the, bring back the scoop bell bottom, like the skater pants that everyone wore. The Junko, what, what were they called? The Junko, um, oh shit. What was the brand of jeans? Started with a J. Fuck me. Know. Anyway, anyway. 
I, I know digress. what you're saying, though. I, know, I, I, I know digress. So they're experiencing a similar thing for physical media. So vinyl sales, I'm sure you've probably seen with something, especially around rap music and stuff. Vinyl sales have gone way through the fucking roof. CD sales, even though down overall historically, are coming back up for similar reasons. Uh, apparently, they like the idea, or they like the uh, being able to go to a store, pick up something, go through you know, what we did when we were fucking growing up, go through, like, a like a whole bin of shit and whatnot and take something home with them. There's something to it. And then owning it. But then also with music and movies, the quality difference is obviously... You listen to a stream, you listen to a CD, it's like a fucking... They're, they're different things entirely. Um... And so, with games, that's also on the come up, which I found kind of, uh, kind of interesting as well. And so I wondered still more when I looked into that, I said, you know, how much of this is the publishers doing it? Because we know that in movies and games, for example, they've definitely been making a push and have been for, oh, like, I mean, God, 15 years or more now to go to digital because they get to enjoy lo uh, higher margins because they're not paying for the physical side. So lower overall costs, higher margins. DRM control is a big one for movies. Also a pretty big one for, for games. But on the game front, it's easier to do implementation of live services and microtransactions, uh, digital-only sales as well, when you're doing a digital product that, or a pr predominantly digital product. And so there's a lot of up uh, upside for, for media companies to be doing it. And so I think... I would like to propose that while it's totally convenient for people, I think a lot of it is artificial, and they don't have a choice, or they have less choices. They're being starved for choices over time, uh, despite an uptick in a want in younger generation people of wanting to get, have and retain physical media because stuff like this is happening, where they are losing things that they had spent their money on that is becoming no longer available to them. Uh, I'm going to ask you what your thoughts are on this. I just want to make sure that you got the whole shtick here. It's perhaps also interesting to note, I looked into this, because you think about Nintendo. Nintendo still uses cartridges. And they push hard, they push physical still pretty hard. Like, they're not pulling absolutely everything off the shelf. As it turns out, still today, or as of 2023, 52% of all of their sales are still physical. So still over half are all physical. And that's in the U.S. Compare that to PlayStation and Xbox, who have been pushing way harder for online stuff. Only like 10, only 10 percent of of Xbox is physical. We don't have the numbers for Sony, but we can extrapolate extrapolate that between 52 52 percent from Nintendo and 10 percent from Microsoft. You're in the 30 something percent to 40 percent on PlayStation side. But then of that, how much of that was, was digital and, and whatnot for, for Sony, I don't have those numbers. But we know that it's high because only 4% of their revenue came from physical sales. So we don't have the exact numbers, but we know the vast majority are, are digital sales. So there's definitely an impetus or, or a genesis point that might not just be consumer behavior, and some of it is just consumers not having as many choices to continue to buy physical copies. So the last thing I'll, I'll, I'll put in here before I ask you about your thoughts on this is that another interesting piece to this is that the subscription models, and we've talked about this in terms of movies and TV section as well a couple times now. There's starting to be studies done, and I looked up at this when I was looking up these other studies, about subscription fatigue. Because we're getting to a consumer's you know, where they're getting, they're starting to get fatigued. I think everyone here listening to this, and you and I included, Mr. Black, can look at how many services are vying for our attention, how many different places media is being split up and put onto X number of services, how much they're charging for these services, and how they continue to go up at what seems to be an ever increasing pace. It used to be once a year. Now it seems like it's once every fucking quarter that they're raising the price on these subscription services. And so there's fatigue there. So now there's another silo where it's, it's not just physical and digital. Now it's I own digital and I just stream it. So I'm not even buying it. I'm just paying a subscription every month, right? So it's like Game Pass versus buying the game on Xbox, but buying it digitally. So there's these various versions of quote unquote ownership 
and how you can access your media. And that seems to be like another new area where people are going, man, shit, if I want to watch, like I put here as an example, try to go watch Pokemon. If you have kids or some shit and they're trying to watch like seasons through, good luck. It's literally like 20 fucking services that Pokemon is distributed across and with no real sense. I mean, there could be five episodes in the middle of a season that are just taken out and fucking randomly put somewhere else. So there's a lot going on in the media landscape and games are obviously very much at the core of all this. But what are your thoughts, Mr. Mr. Black, after after, you know, after you know, knowing some of this stuff now, I found it very interesting do you think that over time that especially with what you've seen with people more and more people trying to go after retro games as well for physical ownership in our age group for example do you think that there is ironically going to be perhaps a physical market that gets reborn after after a period of like nearly all digital sales because they're doing things like this where they're starting to just take away what you've spent nine an increasing amount of money on. We're at like the, we're at the hundred dollar mark now plus for games. And so even though it's a nice idea, Oh, I'm never going to likely want to play this game again. There is something to be said about in the future. I do just feel like plugging in and playing some Skyrim today. I got that on tap boom, or I don't. So do you think that there's a possibility that we're working ourselves into a uh, into a point where these companies are ironically going to flip consumer behavior into wanting to go back to owning, oh, actually owning to some degree their digital media, whether it's games or, or movies, et cetera, music, what have you? Yeah. I don't know, man. It's hard to say. Mm. I... Um... I think probably a lot of it, like the reason why Nintendo has such a high physical sale, I think it's just because, um, number one, their online is trash. Mm -hmm. Their online is just bad. Just mm -hmm. It's always been bad. Um, we have a Switch. I've downloaded games on the store. Um, that's fine. Download speed has to do with your internet connection. So if you have fiber op, like you're good, but most of the games that are being played on Nintendo aren't typically online games. They have online features, but they're not online focused. They're not service uh, I, I feel like type this, games. Exactly. Like there's not a lot of live, live service games on Nintendo that are really pushing the needle. Like the Sony and Xbox, like, their system is based around live service games to a degree, you know, like um, there's two, two totally different models. And um, I also think part of that comes with like, like we've discussed before the N Nintendo's confidence in their brand and, and how good their games are. They don't need these, these cheap tactics or promising 10 years of development for this game or that game or whatever. They don't, they don't really go down that. To, so so I think that's part of it for Nintendo, but I also think Nintendo has done a great job at um, keeping their physical media relevant. I mean, if you look at the wall here behind me, mm. the majority of the physical media up there is Nintendo-based. They got regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, um, Game Boy. There is something about um nintendo with physical media that is just different than playstation and physical media um some of that comes from biasness i understand that some people may go i have no i don't give a fuck about nintendo i don't give a shit i'll download the games the same what i would on the other ones but there's just something about nintendo that um I don't know. It's it's hard to put my finger on exactly what it is, but if I had to choose personally, if I'm going to go and buy a Nintendo Switch game or any Nintendo product, I want the physical copy. I don't want to download it. But when it comes to like Sony, I don't care. Like it's like if I'm out 
I'll prefer to go grab the Sony disc if I'm out. But like if I'm at the house and I want to play the game and I just don't feel like leaving the house, I'll download it and I won't feel bad about it. Be like, oh, whatever, I don't care. But with Nintendo, I wouldn't have that same thing. I'd actually go out of my way to go to the store to go and purchase the game. Um, and I think part of that might be the conditioning that the consoles have set out for their consumers. You know, Sony, uh, Microsoft, they've been pushing this downloadable shit for years. I mean, this has just been going on even before it was popular. They were trying to, all right, guys, you know, just download it at home. You know, it's, it's, look, check out it. I mean, it's just the way that it is. Um, Nintendo, not so much. You don't really see any real advertisements about, you know, you need to go. Now, Nintendo will do this. You'll go and buy the physical copy, but they'll just give you a card, like a code. Their game won't even be in the fucking box. There'll just be a code, and then you go and you put the code in there. People will legitimately go out to just buy the fucking case. It's crazy. The case. There's not even phys- There's not even physical media. There's a case. So, I, 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 I think, I think it's, I think it's layered. Do I think that this, this, them pushing like Sony and Microsoft pushing so much? digital if it's going to uh, bring a resurgence to physical media i don't i just don't think so i think part of the reason why retro video games are selling the way that they're selling and the prices of them are going up is simply because of two things number one is nostalgia and number two is it's the age group of the people that have the nostalgia the, there's a big difference here right like a 30 year old like i'm 37 now so i'm fucking pushing 40 but let's say you're between the ages 30 and 45 right this is it's a pretty big gap but you know you're likely going to have some sort of nostalgia for some sort of older console right where whether that is super nintendo regular nintendo if you're in your 40s could even be um um uh, uh like jaguar atari some old stuff, right? If you're if you're in your 30s, it could be N64. It could be PlayStation 1. It could be uh, whatever the case may be. So I think because of the age and the group that we're in, there is something cool about going back in time. And let's be real here, Adam. The vast majority of these games, the, you can't really buy them digitally. Like, yeah, they have they have versions that they may have ported for specific things. But, you know, if you, if you just want to go play the original game, you, you, you can't, I mean, if you go download emulators and ROMs and shit, you can, but it's not the same, bro. Part of the, 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 part of the experience of these games behind me is putting it into a console physically and holding the actual controller that, that, you're, that you're playing. Not a keyboard and mouse and experiencing the game or um, a, a, a re-released version of the, of the game with a little bit better graphics thing, whatever. It's different. Now, in the future, what are, what are, the, what are the, 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 the Gen Z are going to think? Well, if they want to go back and play Fortnite or they want to go play Minecraft or they want to go play um, any of these uh, Ro- Ro- Roblox or whatever it's called, or any of these other games, I mean, Call of Duty, anything. Um, they're all, they, they all got them from a digital world. That's how they experienced the game. They experienced the game through the epic launcher. That thing didn't exist when this stuff was here. Steam didn't exist when this stuff was here. They have been conditioned into gaming in a certain way, in a, in a different way than what you and I have. And so they don't have the nostalgia for this. I'm sure like some can, can appreciate it. Or if they are children of individuals like you and I that may have grown up in a household and they have certain nostalgia around that, a little bit different. But when, they, when, when these 17, 16-year-olds are 35, they're not going to go, oh, man, if only I could go and get a physical copy of Fortnite. They're going to say, no, bitch, I'm, I'm just going to go download it on whatever the physical media to them it's almost like it's an ancient realm like even for somebody like me when when it comes to records i have no nostalgia for records because i wasn't in that that uh i was uh uh cassettes i would i i i was a cassette guy i never 
the the vinyl was it wasn't me vinyl is my old man so my old man would be like yo you check out this vinyl bro this is crazy this is vinyl knowing damn well i could go and download like a fucking flack version of a of, uh, of michael jackson's thriller album and i'm gonna get a way better sound i'm gonna get the fucking the the just by downloading it digitally but there's something about the physical media for the ones that were brought up in physical media so no i personally don't think that this is going to turn the tide for uh like in 10 years suddenly uh, uh gen z are going to go man i just would love to get all those games that i had in a physical form so i could see on my shelf what they'd have instead or maybe figures from their from their favorite games right like uh, like you know Everybody's got their collectibles or certain things. They, they, they'll they have those. But when it comes to actual playing the game, they're just going to go and download them. So, um, yeah, I, I think the reason why Nintendo is way more, a way higher percentage is because they haven't been conditioning their, um, their audience to think in a digital way. I also, I also think that will change. I think over the next 10 years, instead of 50%, or 52%, it might be 30%. It'll it'll start to come down because of just how the world is working. More like less and less big box stores holding video games. People are just not buying games the way they used to. It used to be an event to go to EB Games or go to Blockbuster and used to take an hour to go look on the back of things. Now everything's on Twitch, everything's on YouTube. Reviews are there. It's all on the it's all right there on your cell phone. You can whatever it is that you need, you're you're already pre-ready to go. If you're going to buy games at EB Games, you're going there right now with a purpose. You're not going there to browse. You're going, I'm going there to buy this. You go in there. If something catches your eye, maybe, but you're not going to go there and, and spend an hour to look through all the games to see which one you want. We're in a different time, my man. So I don't know, man. I don't think it's that deep. I just think it's very different generations on how they consume things and what they were and how they're brought up. And, uh, you know, I think some of the Gen Zs w- will appreciate physical media. I think there is a small section that will want physical media so that they can keep what they bought theirs and they you know they can't digitally lose it it's almost like i always look at buying digital games as almost like a rental because it kind of is <laughs> it's kind of like a it's pretty a much rental. what it is because there is the fine print if this shit goes down they have the right to basically fucking delete your shit and it's gone it's rare Will it happen? Unlikely. Typically, when that stuff happens, it's at the end of a life cycle to an old console of 20 years ago. You know, and and let's be real. That ain't disrupting the market or too many people. So, you know, there will be people that will want physical media. I am one of those individuals, but I'm not one of those individuals for everything. There are specific platforms and things that I want to have the physical media in. And then there's other things where maybe I'm not as attached where I don't give a fuck. I'm going to play a game and probably never play it again. And uh, whether I have the physical media or not, it's, it's irrelevant. One thing that I will add is the nice thing about having physical media, whether you're buying Nintendo Switch games, you're buying um, uh, PlayStation 5 games, Xbox, whatever, is for resellability. Now, the, the, the problem is, is when you, when you go to get rid of your old console and games, the value that people put, and I know this intimately because I've, I buy a lot of video games, or at least I used to, is people will not value a digital game the same way they value a physical game. So, for example, what I mean is if you went out and bought the brand new Mario game and it cost you 100 bucks all in, and you played and beat the shit out of that in one week, then you went to go... Um, on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or Kijiji or wherever you want to sell it, and you say, okay, this game is still hot, it's still out, I paid 100 bucks. I'm looking to get 80 for it. Chances are you'll find somebody that will pay the 80 bucks, save 20 bucks. The only thing they don't get to do is open up the, the seal, and that's it. The game is there. It's the same thing. They'll likely pay it. At the very bare minimal, we're talking you're going to get 70% of your money back if you sell it quick enough. You know, you might take a 30% L. But if you were to buy it digitally, number one, you can't, you can't just sell it. It's on your account. Then there are rules about sharing your accounts. 
And then if you get caught sharing your accounts, well, then you both y'all are going to you're going to lose everything. Not only that, when you go to actually sell all of your stuff, I've had people try and say, hey, I've got a Nintendo Switch and it's got 18 downloaded games on it valued in at eleven hundred dollars. I'm looking for nine fifty. Well, I don't give a fuck about your digital games because now you're making me pay for everything that you have and your 18 games or whatever. Maybe I'm only interested in three of them. I have to buy them all and you're valuing them at what 70 80 percent of the value no that's not how this shit works so your your ability to to resell um and just you know it's it's almost like uh it's almost like being liquid you know when when, when, you, when you have a physical when you have physical media it's not liquid but like it's it's much easier to turn into liquid than it is to it's have gold. it in digital exactly right and so there are a subset of people that would just prefer to have physical media for the options. Um, and uh, that will always, I think, be a thing until eventually we're in a completely digital world, which we inevitably will go to. There will come a time where all the new consoles will not give any physical media. I'm just telling it, it's it's we're a, we're quite a ways out from that, but it is going to happen. Um, and I, and I, and what's, why it's going to happen is eventually that 52% will turn into 20% and then they'll realize there is no point in us printing any of this. We're actually losing money with the, the packaging, the shipping, the, all this, we're losing money. We're not going to do that. So I know I've given you a long winded answer. No, that's fine. No, that's good. There's a lot of different ways that you can look at it. I just yeah. don't foresee physical media making a big uprise for, for this next generation. It's, I just don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I, I agree with pretty much everything you said. Uh, I just want to quickly say thank you, Greg, for the 10 sheet over on YouTube. Bless Greg. Thank you very much. Who's been main baning the podcast, getting episodes 274 through 319 in one and a half months. That is a lot of podcasting. I don't know what you've been doing to have that in the background for that long, but God bless you. And thank you very much for the, uh, for the super chat over on YouTube. So, and I, I wanted to ask you about, uh, about a point that you brought up there when you were talking about your, uh, your own preferences and trying to describe, for example, the, the mystique around owning physical Nintendo games, for example, versus, uh, PlayStation or Xbox games these days. Um, I'm wondering, and do you think that some of that is, or has to do with, The fact that that Nintendo are of the three, um, other than the games that you can find, like you know indie games and stuff on on a, on a PC, that Nintendo of the three are are is the only one still making. You'll know what I mean when I say this. Games. So, PlayStation's making interactable movies. By and large, that's their first party titles. You know what I mean? Like God of War. The Last of Us. They're interactable movies, more or less. Um, Xbox first-party titles are largely just live service, whatever yeah. genre they can get their hands on. Yeah. Nintendo is still making games. Yes. Mario is yeah. a game. Zelda. Zelda Pokemon. is a game. You know, Pokemon these... is... A, these are video games. It, they're yeah. not services, and they're not... They're not interactable, you know, movies, uh, you know, that you're watching cutscenes all the time. Um, and so I'm wondering if some of that mystique about owning the physical copy is because it still feels like a game and not a movie rental. When I play a Sony game, by and large, I feel like I have just spent a lot of money on a movie rental. Yeah. Because most of the game parts are yeah, usually or whatever, and then I'm watching yeah. cutscenes. A movie, cutscenes. Yeah. Everyone wants these high fidelity graphics, and holy shit, did you see what they did here? And yada 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 yada. And then the game part is normally just kind of like, eh, okay, yes, yeah, it could be good, but it's not the it's not the the game isn't the focus. Nintendo games, the focus is the game part. Yeah, the gameplay, and so when you buy. A Mario game, you have it on physical media, and the power and internet goes out, and you have the Switch, and you plug the cartridge in, and you can still play a video game. There is something inherently different about that, and I do think some of that could be, it's just, they're the only ones still predominantly making 
games and not interactive media, which is kind of what everyone else seems to be chasing after. What do you do? You think that might be part of it? I think it might be part of it. Like, like it the mystique, like the mystique about why owning. Yeah, yeah, it might it's, be. There's still of it. games and not just. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you. Yeah, I mean, you make a good point. I just, I don't know, Adam. I, I'm just talking about your point specifically about why you might yeah. feel this about. I'm not talking about the market. I'm just talking about like what it might be about Nintendo. Other, because obviously, like some games you're buying, it's no, it's you know, the newest Mario game isn't giving you nostalgia because it's not you going back and playing Mario 64. It's it's a Mario game and it's awesome. And you you obviously the Mario as a character is nostalgic, but like yeah. the games you're playing is not Mario 64. No, no, it's not. But at the same time, I mean, Nintendo's is still Nintendo's like an anomaly because also think about how many parents are buying Nintendo games for their kids. Well, that's not right? unintentional, though. Like, that's 100% exactly. intentional, yeah. Of course. And yeah. and the parents are you and me. Yes. The, this demographic, right? And we are used to buying physical media. It's, it's, once again, not only that, when your parents gift things to their children, mm -hmm. as a parent, we like to give and, and see the... Um, it's not a gift card reaction. for V bucks. Exactly. It's different <laughs> when you just download a game and say, "Here yeah. you go, happy birthday." Yeah, it's yeah. different. Yeah. But it's it. But when it's wrapped and you're giving it and they're opening it and they go, "Oh my God, it's Mar, it's Pokemon," you know, and they're going crazy. And then they get to open up the game, and typically it's the parent that's opening the game for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we get that feel. We get to live that again through our children. And of course, it's Nintendo. Now, a lot of these teenagers, when it comes, what do they say to the teenagers playing Sony and, and Xbox? Hey, what do you want? All right, gift card or money, right? <laughs> okay, do it. You know, they're, and they'll just go fuck off. They'll either go, you know, buy uh, alcohol and drugs or they'll, <laughs> you know, buy their <laughs> video game or all three. You know, but that's, that's just the way that's, I, you know, I, I Nintendo is just different, bro. It's, it's just literally, they know what they're doing. They, they, they've conditioned their, their, their user to, to think and buy a certain way, just the same way Xbox and Sony has conditioned their user. Because I was very, very against digital stuff in the beginning. Like, sure. I was like, nah, bro, I'm going to go and buy this fucking shit. I'm not. And then eventually I just, it just became more and more EB games going out of business. You know, I, well, I it was just, also like day one patch where you had to install the whole game on exact, the hard drive. It was basically, exact. they were forcing you to like, it was easier. It was to just, just easier to go buy the game, throw the again, disc in there and be done with it. And again, with Nintendo, and, that's not part of it. There's no day one patch. You no, plug the fucking game in. And it's good to go. And that's it's good it. to go. Like, there's a difference, right? There's there's a, there's a difference. There's, there's, a, difference. there's a big difference. And that that's the reason why they're selling 50 something percent physical media. That's the reason. I know what's if funny Netflix is Netflix tried to go and do physical media, they would they did and they failed horribly. It was when they went to digital. Mm -hmm. And you and you can't even make the 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 comparisons from movies and video games in this instance because they're two totally different things. The entire world have have basically been uh, uh, changed into digital media when it comes to consuming movies and TV shows. TV's always been that way, but movies, dude, there, who buys Blu-rays anymore? Nobody, nobody, everybody. I shouldn't say nobody. It's a it's and it's small. The percentage is very small. Um, you know, that last, that last URA was DVDs. That was when people were like still combating. Do I want to, do I want to stream this or do I want to get it on DVD? Right. And eventually once the, the quality went up on streaming and in, people's internet connections got better and it was more so the introduction of streaming services where every you just got used to not putting shit into a Blu-ray uh, player. Who has a Blu-ray player in 2024? Who? Your console does. And if you don't have a console, you don't have a Blu-ray player. 
is digital. Blu-ray's like 10 years ago, bro. Like that, that Blu-ray's dead. So it's a dead platform. So which you is know, funny because uh, they're doing a 4K release of a 4K Blu-ray release of the um Ocean's Eleven movies of all things. <laughs> what? I mean, sure, go for it. You, you know what I mean? Like, like there, once there again, are there are the people, be, but it's a small, it's a small, it's a small it's percentage. A small, I, I, dude, I appreciate it's a that. Small per, it's so, a small percent. So saying that, another fun, another fun thought about this is, um, so in gaming right now, and this is this is a topic I might actually write about next, uh, for the site, do a video on it, um. There, gaming has changed in more than just the in more than just like the people downloading digital versus physical and whatnot. The there are more video games being made now than fucking ever. Like the the sheer amount of games being put out every year is insane. But at the same time, the amount of of mind share or the amount of time that a smaller and smaller number of titles at the top are taking up of free time of people that do play games is getting that that the number of games is getting smaller and the amount of time they're spending on them is getting bigger and mm. they're 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 basically black holes so you've got you've got the ones that you've listed before the games that are t- talked about industry wise as problems because of this are Fortnite, Minecraft, Roblox, Call of Duty. Those games, those four games account for like over 60% of the playtime on the, in the industry over half in four games and so you're in a time where more games are being produced than ever before like thousands and thousands each year what, that are all competing for people to buy them and they're costing more and more money than they ever have before to be to, for a game to be made but now they're vying for 40 or 38 <laughs> percent of total available time while also competing with social media as a time sink. Yep. And so you've got, you've got a smaller and smaller amount, more and more cost, harder and harder to get people to, to, to buy in, and the cost of games getting higher and higher. And you have to imagine there's something that's, that's almost like you're going to end up in like two different markets soon. There's going to be people that, that devote almost all of their time to those four games, you can tell by the games listed that that is a certain demographic. Most of them are young, super young, maybe not necessarily broke out into other games that they play yet. They're just fucking Fortnite 24 hours a day. Yeah, maybe that, they that, convert, that, that, maybe they don't. But it's designed that way. It's live service oh, games, 100%. right? They, it's just the 100%. nature of the beast. So you've yeah. got that, and then you've got everyone else fighting over here, and games are now getting up here. So I'll tie in. It's part of the quick news, but it, it's an easy tie-in for me here. Um, that EA, so Star Wars Outlaws is the new Star Wars game that's about to come out here. It's gone into pre-order. The Ultimate Edition, which comes with the season pass, a couple of cosmetics, the ever-present digital art book that nobody ever fucking looks at, uh, and now the even more ubiquitous three-day early access if you pre-order, so you can play it a whole 72 hours before regular people, for 170 Canadian dollars. With the regular edition would be, of course, a hundred Canadian dollars, which is basically half the cost of, a, of an Xbox Series S for a single for a single video game. One sixty nine in tax Canadian is two hundred dollars. So uh, a question I have for you uh, is: Do you think with uh, subscription fatigue, because Sony has their own subscription model, Xbox has their own subscription model, Nintendo is eventually, as you said, and I'm sure they would, at some point, have their own subscription model. People are paying for 14 different TV subscription models slash video, movie, whatever subscriptions, and every other fucking goddamn subscription they got underneath the sun, and there's fatigue going everywhere. And you've got this massive video game market vying for this tiny, smaller and smaller because of the black holes in video games, smaller and smaller percentage of, of share time for this to be spent, this money, this 200 fucking dollars to be, to be bought up. Do you think in some far-flung universe 
that there is a shot that in another decade where games get even more expensive and more services are, are fucking everywhere, that somebody is going to try to make a game rental service a viable thing again, where people want to spend $7.99 for five days to rent a game because they're only going to play a game a month or two no. games a month instead of spending thirty nine ninety nine for just one of the streaming ser- or one one service like just Xbox Game Pass instead of stacking it with PlayStation and others that they're only going to do it and then they can just have their one game a month for eight bucks and then be done with it. I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't. I, and I, I think the rental model is dead. Um, I think this new hybrid thing, buying things online, is like the new hybrid. I see what you're saying, bro, about all of the different things, you know, the Netflixes. The I'm primes, not saying I think it's going to necessarily Disney, happen the, per se, but I just, it's an interesting thought because it's like just everything's getting so expensive and everyone's being. It is, but you know what? To hell. Everything is getting so expensive. Yes, exactly. Right? Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Video game world, movie world, music world, fucking food, gas. Everything is getting expensive. This is just part of inflation. It is just part of, you know, we're, we're now those guys, man. Like my parents used to tell me, I remember when I used to go to McDonald's and used to get a Big Mac meal for 50 cents. Now it's $10. I remember when I used to go to McDonald's, I used to get a Big Mac meal for like four ninety nine. Now it's ten dollars. I remember when we used to go, you know, rent a video game for four dollars and ninety nine cents. I, I I remember these days. The thing is, those days are gone, bro. And yeah, it's getting very expensive. Um, but once again, like I said, never underestimate the power of escapism. People will pay. The one hundred and sixty nine ninety nine to be a Star Wars nerd three days earlier than everybody else because they are they they want to take the weekend off they want to book from Friday to Monday off from their boss they want to escape from the bullshit in their lives the 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 work the relationships the fucking stress the kids the wife the husband the whatever. And you know what? If that price is $169.99, they'll pay the fucking price. Because for everything else, there's MasterCard. And this is this day they, they know. And yes, that doesn't change the fact that shit is expensive as all fuck. It is. And it's getting ridiculous. And, you know, some people do have to pick and choose on what they want. But the reality is, man, the cold hard truth, Adam. Cold hard truth. I don't think that there's that many people that are looking at these prices and weighing out options. It's either they want the game or they don't want the game. The money will be found. Shit. I remember when I was broke and I was broke. Broke is a motherfucking joke. And if there was something that I, if I wanted to go on that vacation, Oh, man, I was going to find the money to go on that vacation, you know? And that's just the way it is. It's like the Disney families, like 15 grand every every like six months. It's just the truth. There will be a subsection of people that will get priced out of the market, and thus they will have to inevitably get less games per year. That is a fact. But... I think it's smaller than what you would think. I think the people that really want the games, they will work that extra bit or they will go into more debt or they will come up with whatever reason as to why they need that game because there's a lot of FOMO out there. All your friends, your coworkers, your buddies, your pals, they're all playing the games. What are you, what are you doing? You want to be left out? Probably not. They're going to find it. It's true. The it's it's true. I I some part of me, if it wasn't like I think the bigger part about why a rental service wouldn't return after all this time 
Because everything is cyclical, too. I think about that, too. Everything is cyclical. Like, for example, um, other than the, other than, like, the 90s fashion we just joked about, uh, not long ago. Everything comes back. I, um, and this goes for, like, services and stuff. It always seems to, it always seems to go that way. I mean, there's always progress, but trends always seem to come back around. The, um, if it wasn't, if it, if it wasn't for the fact that so many games are a live service element, even single player titles in how they're monetized now, by and large, uh, and the fact that they're, that they're sprinting away from, from physical media at the moment, um, for any number of reasons. I, I do, part of me does feel like a, for games, not for movies, but for games, there would probably be a market for, for a rental situation because everything is going to be on so many different, it's going to turn into like a Netflix situation where there's going to be like five different subscriptions for you to get access to to games where you're not spending $150 for a singular title and uh it's not that I don't uh, I don't agree with you when it comes to people just spending money for escapism because it's 100% that's the reality people will spend a bunch of money but um people are all it's all it's all a value proposition so if you can find a way of making of making rentals of if if you could even make it happen in terms of having the physical media to do a rental, which is the bigger problem, I think, of everything here is even having the fucking physical media in the first place, uh, which just isn't possible right now because of what we just talked about. Is if you give a, if you give people a value proposition that makes sense in their head, they're going to do it. Uh, you know that that's that's that is Game Pass, that is Netflix. Those were all value propositions that solved problems. I mean, those are rentals. Those, that's your rental market, man. That's well, the new rental market. It's, it's, the game it's, pass. It's rentals, but it's like, you know, it, but people, people know, people know that for, um, like it's rentals, but you're not, you're not going to, you don't have access to everything, right? You're just, you get access to whatever Xbox has for a X number of, uh, an X amount of time before games are taken off game pass. They are Xbox branded specifically. And not all Xbox games are on Game Pass or Day One. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you want Sony games, then you're on a different thing entirely. And mm -hmm. if you're on Nintendo, then it's a different thing entirely. Uh, just like when we were kids, right? Like you had a PlayStation, I had Nintendo, somebody else had, you know, Diz you had, had a fucking, I had yeah. an Xbox when we when that era came around. I was Xbox, um, and. And that was how we avoided that trap was, you know, we all had a console and then we would be getting games for the individual consoles, renting them. Yeah. Um, so, there, but there's a value, anytime you give somebody a value proposition, you can, you can make something work. And I think when you start talking about games that cost $150 pop, an $8 rental starts sounding like a pretty good value proposition to somebody, even against a $39 a month subscription. It does, um, but it'll never happen. Right. Because back in the day, we never had we never had one hundred and sixty nine ninety nine dollar games, right? We had like thirty nine ninety nine games, forty nine ninety nine games, and hmm. so you know it, it's very different. Once again, in inflation it, it, it's is wild, and just the cost of making things. The it, rentals will never happen for multi, for multiple reasons. First, biggest one is who's going to do it? Well, who's going to go and buy all? You, you uh, can't. Who's, who's, there's no. There's no physical media to buy. Is the problem right Correct. now? There's no physical. And there even you if go. you did, it's a patch problem and everything else. Like there's that's, is is that the the industry is kind of inadvertently. I don't think the industry ever intentionally was like intended to weed rentals out of the system because I don't think the rental industry was really hurting anyone so much that that was a problem. There was discussion know, way back Look, in the day I with mean, burning discs. But yeah, like, but think about how think about piracy in 2024, bro. I well, mean, Jesus well, well, piracy now, like the difference between now and then, I suppose, is back then, um, with the exception of some very early days in P2P sharing file services, um, and then having the knowledge of how to actually convert that, yeah. you had to rent a game to then copy it. You Correct. didn't have any other options. Now it's if there was a rental service, Digital. you could you could do it, but you can just 
you could do it anyway. And like so a lot of the problem, a lot of the problems around that now is that the re a lot of a lot of the reasons why and like like um, Gabe Newell said best, I think is and this is paraphrasing, but the way to beat piracy is to simply is to simply ensure that the people that are paying for the game are getting the best experience. The problem with piracy in games right now in a digital marketplace is that for many of them that have DRM software that make the game run worse, patent like just outright fucking worse, or even or even worse than that, maybe they have like anti cheat that's low level. Now we're like kernel level fucking anti cheat on computers and shit, trying to combat some dude selling cheats for a million dollars a month. The idea for Gabe is just provide the fucking game so that the people that are paying for it are having the best experience. Then they're gonna buy the game. But if you put out your game, yeah, people are and they they're gonna, and, and and they're gonna have a worse time. They're just gonna go yeah. pirate it. And the people yeah. like the argument about piracy was also that I always thought was uh, was a hundred percent accurate. Is if somebody was gonna pirate your game, they were never gonna fucking buy the game to begin with. No. So like you, you're not losing the money is not being lost. There's no, there was no money up for grabs. That person was never going to give you their money. And so between those two paradigms of these people were never going to give you money. And these people are doing it because they are getting a better experience by doing so. That is the piracy problem. But it's true. It would never, it would never happen for a number of reasons. I just think that it would be a very interesting Think if it ever came back around the what i in terms of physical media and we'll cap this thing here i'll do the couple the quick news and we'll move on but the um the physical media thing it looks like we might actually be integrating physical media again they've they have created now a disc that is you know, for example, about Blu-ray discs are like uh, dual layer or dual sided. Yeah, I heard about these crazy discs that hold about bajillion. They hold a space. shitload of fucking space, and they don't require different. I don't know what your your mic is doing a hell of an angle right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I I have no idea. It's like the fucking thing's gonna fall off. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. Anyway, uh, but. They don't require different lasers to read the discs. Like they, they can they work with existing technology. And so I find that kind of interesting because uh, part of the problem that uh, that games, physical games, have right now, of course, is is that the sheer size of them are becoming a problem, even for dual layer dual layer Blu-ray discs. And so I'm very interested in how in how that um, how that plays out as well in the coming years. But it's true. But all very interesting things. I'm super interested that as young as 24 and 25 year olds are showing a a a demonstrable uptick in and wanting to buy physical media of any kind, especially books, movies, uh, and increasingly games. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun to see how, um, how that uh, kind of washes out and how the market continues to uh, evolve. But certainly more interesting for me that spans all media is subscription fatigue. How are they going to handle that? How many of these companies are going to fold or get bought up by other people? How many, like, what's the cycle look like for that? Because we're experiencing the cycle that happened in cable television before cable television blew up and streaming yeah. services came in. So we're about, it feels like we're just about, we're climbing that mountain and about to go down the other side and have the same mm. fucking, you know, roller coaster. But we'll have to, uh, we'll wait and see. But yes, nevertheless, very interesting stuff. Quick news, I already mentioned the, uh, the Star Wars bit. That's an experience. Please, for the love of God, I don't care how much you like Star Wars. Please don't encourage don't them. Don't buy that. Don't yeah, encourage don't them. That. Don't do it. You know, buy the standard edition if you, if you need to. Like, that's, yeah, okay. Sure. But pre-ordering and spending nearly 200 Canadian so that you can play this game three days early, Nah. Which we've already established day one gaming is fucking goddamn atrocious right now. It's always bad. It's always broken. It always requires but those first three days patching. And oh yeah, and servers are gonna be all fucked. The game's gonna be fucked, bro. Just need to be <laughs> patching. <laughs> yeah, Let no. it go. You're paying for patching, is what you're doing. Uh so don't do that. But we so we talked about that part. 
to stay on the EA though, EA had uh, had either a Dead Space 2 remake or a dead new Dead Space project entirely lined up that was canceled due to poor sales performance of the Dead Space 1 remake. So this was interesting to me because it kind of, the reasoning behind this kind of rings true with what we heard from Square Enix in the past. So the, the, the reasoning behind this reportedly is that they canceled it because of poor performance of the remake of Dark's, uh, of, uh, of, um, um, sorry, Dead Space 1. They did that. It, it was a game of the year contender in some places. It did very well. Uh, it sold 2 million copies. 2 million, co- 2 million copies for a remake of a horror game in a market flooded with more games as we were just discussing, than, like ever fucking made ever. And the deve- and, and EA went, yeah, that failed. 2 million copies? Dog water. Cancel the next one. Can't be done. And I just feel like that is a really depressing but reality check for where we are in terms of the cost of development and what companies are spending on trying to develop these games, how much they need back before they will even consider continuing down a certain path. And it reminded me, and we talked about this before because they mentioned this came out in like 2017, but Square Enix, as I mentioned, you might remember, um, famously, they came out saying that they were disappointed in the ter- the uh, Tomb Raider reboot from 2013. Uh, it didn't do good enough numbers for them. That game sold 8.5 million copies, which was the highest selling game in the entire franchise's history and one of the highest selling games under the Square Enix badge, and they looked at 8.5 million and said, not Call of Duty numbers, not good enough. Well, dude, I'm, I mean, th- th- this EA shit, th- this, I think part of it is bullshit. I think, you think, I think, th- you think they're just this? using it as an excuse? Yes, I do. What's the, the real reason, one? Mr. Black? Well, I mean, I think, uh, okay. <laughs> the first Dead Space remake sold a yes. million copies. The second one sold two million copies. It doubled. Mm-hmm. So, if the first one sold a million, you mean the um, first game when it first came out, and the then the first sk- and then, yes, you, and then the remake the sold two. All right, the right. first game sold a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. You. First game sold a million, and then I think it did because I, I I actually read on this. Uh, I think maybe this morning when I woke up, Dead Space. Mm-hmm. One sales. Let me just just before I talk it to my ass. Okay, Dead Space sold. Oh, yeah, exactly. One million copies worldwide, and that was considered a very successful fucking game when it came out. Like people were yes. all up on that game. Yeah. So when Dead Space Two shipped, it's saying that it sold about two million copies. Okay. And then what we're did Dead talking- Space One remake sell? Was two million copies also? Dead Space One. Yeah, because that's what we're talking right. about. It was two million copies. It's, uh, there you go. It's just two yeah. million copies. Yeah. And I actually hear that the the remake was pretty good. It was good. very well like, done. It was well done. Like super it was well, well done. done. Yeah. Um, and I'm usually an EA hater. So, yeah. you know, hey. Well, Dead they Space published is, it. I they always... didn't develop it. They just published oh, it. Just I it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's probably why. They put the stamp on it. That's, they that's put the it. stamp on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, if they sold a million copies before and now they're selling two million copies something's not adding up here okay the math ain't mathin the math the math ain't mathin if <laughs> if if you say if if you knew that your game i mean were they expecting the game to 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 sell eight million copies five million copies ten million copies like you know <laughs> Like, I mean, dude, it's Dead Space. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a saying. solid game. But, but like, it's like dude, a niche it's horror space. game. It's, a niche. It's, it's, it's exactly. <laughs> you double, you doubled your sales. Yeah. Doubled on a remake. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you're gonna call this a failure, dude? You know what this is? This is, bro. They gaslighting. They gaslighting. <laughs> I actually believe that they're fucking full of shit. I mean, how much money did you put? It's either they are absolutely atrociously bad with money. 
And they actually are fucking dumb as shit. Their marketing, everything, their the 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 strategic um, implementation of this game. You got to be fired. You got to be the dumbest piece of shit to think that you're going to go from one million in sales to five or ten million in sales. You want to know why they they're, they're considering that they're, they're saying? In my opinion, and I could be wrong. I'm, it's a hot take. It's a hot take. You don't need to believe it. Form your own opinion. You're asking for mine. I'm going to give it to you. I think that they realized that they're going to go and put their money and their time into better or into other games that sell more. And because other games that sell more, it's better for the headlines. It's better for the shareholders. It's better overall. And they, they're, they're why, why would you be happy with a 30% return on your money? Right, and I'm just throwing an arbit- arbitrary number out there. I-, I don't know what their loss and profit margins were for this game, but selling two million copies, I highly doubt they lost money. I I mean, if they did, I mean, dude, you 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 need help because you're you're you're. I mean, when you're doing a remake of a game and you sell two million copies, knowing the other one sold a million and it's not enough to break even, you already have a bad business model. So you should be fired anyway. So I'm just going to make the assumption that's not the case. And they made some money. Okay. Let's go and say they made 20%. Let's lower it. Let's say they made 20% on their money. Say they put a hundred million dollars into this and they got $120 million back. All right. Made 20%. Well, they also know that they could go and release... What other EA shit game do they have? Name one. Battlefield. All of them? Yeah, Battlefield. Battlefield. Okay? (laughs) Let's go with Battlefield. I don't know how much... How many copies of the last Battlefield? What was the last Battlefield that came out? Battlefield. Let's go 2040... 2040. No, it was the most recent was Battlefield. What did they just call it? Did they just call it Battlefield? Did they reboot it? Battlefield... I can't sales. remember now. Battlefield, okay, so Battlefield 1942 sold 3 million copies. All right? 3 million copies. Was 2042 the most recent? 20, is it tw- four, t- Yeah, 2042 is their newest one. Sold yeah. 3 million copies. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. So, say they got a 20% ROI on the uh, Dead Space remake, and they made 20 million bucks. Well, then they look at Battlefield and they sold 3 million copies. But the question is, is how much money did it, did it cost to make Battlefield? Yeah. And how much money did it cost to make Dead Space? I don't know. But maybe their return for a property like Battlefield is more than what the return is on Dead Space. And so instead of hiring another 200 devs to go and make whatever a dead spacer are they hold off cut costs they they don't they don't have to spend as much money up front or maybe they do but their return is more so they're cutting their workload and what do they tell the fans it was a failure and they're all scratching their head going wait it's a failure it's like it's like if game of thrones came out and the first season had 3 million concurrent viewers. And then the second season had 6 million. And then they go, guys, this was a fail. What the fuck? What's going on here? So the the people were like, guys, we drove drove out, or we bought these things digitally because ain't nobody buying this shit in in physical media. We We bought this shit digitally and we put our money in this game. We gave it all the praise in the world. A good game. That you did well with. You did well. And you're calling it a failure? You mean to tell me your good games are now failures? And your shit games are now successes? It doesn't make sense. It feels like they're gaslighting us. And I also believe that they still will make another dead or a, a, a dead space. And they're positioning this as in... We heard you. We know that you guys love this game. And although this one didn't, the last one didn't do so well, we're hoping you guys will really show up and buy the next one so that maybe they can prop this up to 3 million next time. Because Lord knows the fans are probably heartbroken right now going, I just, 
I thought we were firing all cylinders here. I bought this game. I loved it. I gave it a great review. You doubled your sales. What more do you want from me? So they're going to go and they're going to they're going to go make another battlefield. The battlefield's going to have lackluster or shit ass reviews. They're going to sell a bunch of copies because the people that are buying them are the same people that buy Call of Duty and they don't give a fuck. They don't care. They just want more shit. It's the same people who go to McDonald's knowing they're going to get the squirts an hour after they fucking eat the fucking quarter pounder with cheese. So what are they going to do? They're going to go make this. They're going to make a little bit more turn on their profit and they're going to dial back. They're going to go, you know what, guys? We're going to... We're actually going to give you the next, we're actually going to give you the next remake, but we're really hoping because the last one didn't sell so hot. Two million. Come on. I really hope you go out there. I really think they play in Jedi mind tricks. I really do. Because if not, it just doesn't make sense, Adam. Why would you make the game? If you knew the first one sold a million copies, dude, look at Alan Wake two. Was that a failure? How many copies did Alan Wake two? uh, Alan Wake 2 sales. 1.3 million copies. Okay? Let's go take a look. What's the sales of Alan Wake 1 sales? Remedy's fastest selling game ever, by the way. Alan Wake, the first one, sold 3.2 million copies. The second one sold 1.3. Did they come out and say the game was a failure? Dude, they were doing full no. blown. They were doing full blown musicals on the Game Awards. I'm freaking telling stage. you right now, there is no way in fuck that Dead Space remake cost more to make than Alan Wake Two. There's no shot. And if There's it did, no shot. then they. If it did, then their business model it it's not it's us. Terrible. We're not the problem. No, it's them. They're the yeah. fucking problem. Yeah. There's just no. There's no fucking shot, dude. It makes no sense at all none none i i do none. believe and we brought this this was kind of a point of discussion before i do believe if i'm not mistaken sony's spider-man 2 needed to sell somewhere between five and seven million dollars to break even million copies or five million copies sorry to break even but i believe that because licensing mm-hmm. because uh the amount of money like they're gonna pour it's no different than marvel the literal marvel movies if they're gonna go and make endgame and it costs them half a billion dollars to make they know they're gonna they're, they know the ticket sales is gonna be minimal 1.52 billion so they're able to put to allocate that extra money knowing that they're gonna get a bigger return that that their dollars it's like it's the, it's the same analogy you bought your house in your neighborhood. You didn't pay. You don't have the most expensive house in the neighborhood. You didn't pay the absolute fucking, uh, you didn't, you didn't spend, let's say for example, your house was half a million bucks, right? I know that's not, but let's just say for layman's terms, you pay half a million bucks and all the houses in the neighborhood are right around the same around a half a million bucks. Well, you know that if I go and I throw Another hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars into this house. Yeah, I might have the nicest house in the fucking neighborhood, but nobody is gonna value the house at that at that price because I decided to put unnecessary amount of upgrades in this house to unmatch the neighborhood in which I'm in. You will lose money. It's period. The only time that you do it is for your own personal enjoyment. You don't care. If the, your negative EV, you don't care. All you care about is what you wanted and how you want to live and experience yourself in your home. And if that means you want to spend $150,000 on a ridiculous kitchen and you want a big ass fucking fish tank in your wall with coral reefs, go for it. But don't <laughs> expect a buyer to come in and say, you know what? I value that right there. For what you paid for it. They don't care. The market will tell you. It's just that simple. It's the same thing with video games. If you want to throw in a $300 million uh, uh, production on a game that you know historically sold a million copies. 
and you figure you need to sell five to 10 million, five to 8 million copies to break even, you are an idiot. You're an idiot. <laughs> you put way too much food on your plate at the all you can eat buffet, and now they're charging you on the way out because you didn't eat your food. That's not their fault. You didn't read the sign on the fucking door on the way in. Whatever you don't eat, you're paying for. Anybody that's gone to a sushi, all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant, they have that posted everywhere. You go to the bathroom to take a piss at the urinal, it's right there. Whatever you don't eat, you're paying for. You walk into the door, whatever you don't eat, you're paying for. You look on the menu, fine print. Whatever you don't eat, you're paying for. You're paying for it. So stop over putting money into something that you know your stomach can't handle. So it's either it's bad business or you're a lying sack of shit. It's one of the two. And I refuse to believe that the people over there that made such a good game and it's, and it's, and it, it's done so well. And I believe too that if the game wasn't as, as uh, well-renowned as people are saying that it was, I don't think they come up with this headline at all. I really don't. I think they just let it die. It's almost like they're dangling it into the, into the fans' faces and kind of giving some sad news. Oh, man, guys, it just didn't sound too... I really wish y'all would just go out and buy more copies of this game real quick. It just didn't sell too well. <laughs> Bitch, we doubled your sales. What do you mean? Didn't sell well. It sold 100% it sold better than your last one, dumb two bitch. Million two million copies. So Two no, million. I, I do not want to hear video games are just so expensive these days that even two million copies just wasn't enough. If that's to it, you're in the wrong them. business, bro. You're in the wrong if you, business, bro. That's how, I, that's how I look at this whenever I see developer or publishers and developers talking about games cost too much money to make. Right? Well, that sounds like a fucking you problem. Because if you if you're well, it's and, and by or an industry problem. If yep. if if the video game industry is at a point where you can't sustain a video game on at seventy U.S. dollars, understanding they get a portion of that, obviously, but seventy U.S. dollars on two million sales. You're probably in the wrong business. I feel like mm. you got to be. There is no way. Because like you said, Alan Wake 2 does 1.3. Mm -hmm. You don't hear them saying, oh, it didn't sell all that well, it didn't do all that well, because they probably made money on 1.3 million sales. Correct. So if, if that game can make money on 1.3 mil, and that's a really good comparison because those two games from a visual perspective, from a gameplay perspective, the every, same very, game, sim bro. very similar. It's the same game. It's the same and, game. And so, like, I mean, shit, dude. Game Come pain. It's not, it's not like you got Robert Downey Jr. These voice no. actors, you know, are getting absolutely bent the fuck over and absolutely uh, just getting fucked with no lube, <laughs> no nothing. But they're willing participants. They said, yeah, it's okay. I'll, I'll have consensual sex with you. But when they do, they're getting fucking railed. So they can't even make, they can't even make the, the argument that we're paying our talent too much. They're not. It's, they're like, not. Blizzard, it's like Blizzard paying like, like half the industry standard at this point for their, uh, for their developers. And you're like, yeah, no, man. No, no, bro. No, no. I, it's just, th this shit actually annoyed me. I read, th read it this morning <laughs> because I like Dead Space. I actually yeah. like Dead Space. Yeah, of course. And I'm like, no, bro, this is fucking dumb. This is just dumb. It just makes no sense. Go make a shit Battlefield game, bro. Go sell five million, or not even five million. Go sell three million copies of a game nobody talks about. You go it's ahead and do that. And that's okay. If that's what you want, you do that. It's kind of like a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know what I mean? Where you'll have like publishers complaining about video game cost of production and all this other shit and how many copies need to be sold. And so we can't do this. And we can't do that. Yep. Um, and then they point at like some other game where it's like low effort and they make all sorts of money because they're basically just fucking like mind altering ass drugs type shit yep. with their loot boxes and all the other fucking yep. predatory microtransactions. And so obviously that makes a bunch of money. 
Uh, yeah, because nobody can just be like, well, let's just go make a really good game, stay on budget, and make several million dollars is not good enough. It's we've got we've got to make all the money in the world all, all at once, even if this yep. game had no fucking hope in a million years. Like, the Tomb Raider thing was nuts, because eight and a half million copies is a shitload of fucking video games, especially in all 2013. Yeah. That's a it's fucking a ton of video games. Uh, for Tomb Raider... That ain't Call of Duty's Tomb Raider. You got a, you got a remake of Tomb Raider pulling that kind of money. So I mean, listen, that's what I keep saying about this this crisis of everyone talking about games costing too much money. Like, yeah, I get it. Stuff has got expensive. You know, salaries have gone up and shit. But you cannot tell me that it isn't in large part due to some sort of catastrophic project management fucking failure. And too much interference from the C-suite forcing bullshit upon the developer to do stuff that they think they got a vibe when they woke Dude. up and sunned their taint in the morning and Dude. got their goat yoga in and said, exactly. I need multiplayer in Bioshock 2. Nobody wants that. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Dumbest decision I've ever seen. Dude, Alan Wake 2. I just looked this up. Uh, the game budget. All in. They did. It was 70 million euro. So that's what? 100 million bucks? Give or take? Maybe? I don't know. It's somewhere Let's in that neck Euros. of the Euro. Euros would be less than that. Probably 85. 80. Euro to USD. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's very, actually pretty close right now. So oh, okay. 70. So 70 million. So say 75 million US. Okay. Yeah. And that includes marketing. So 50 million in development. 20 million in marketing. They sold 1.3 million copies. There is no way that Dead Space remake, a remake, by the way, we're talking, they're, they're, they're using. Now, it was ground up, at least. It I was ground understand. up. I get it. Yeah. But I mean. The artistic direction, yeah, there's the, a, yeah, the know, modeling, yeah. Yeah. The, all that, dude. They are going to be drawing from yes. past work to to substantially cut down the amount of time, development, ideas. Don't get me wrong. There's still tons of it to do. Shit tons. I cannot imagine a world in which that remake cost more than Alan Wake 2 was to make. And they sold 700,000 more copies. Two million. That's a failure? I mean, just bump it up to 100 million. Give them another, give them another 25 million on top. And there's no way in fuck they spent $20 million in marketing, bro, for Dead Space Remake. No. They didn't. I'm sorry. Well, Alan Wake 2, I believe. Didn't. That shit yeah. was everywhere. Yeah, that shit was everywhere. Dead Space remake. I saw a couple of things, but not in the not on the level. So you just bump it up. Say apparently, they, say it took them sorry. Apparently, Dead Space Two cost sixty million. So if Dead Space One remake managed to cost more than Dead Space Two and Alan Wake, then that is just outright horrific. Correct. Project management. It's just terrible. Horrible. You, it's actually the terrible. worst. They should be fired. So them passing the buck to the fans, calling it a failure, is actually the wrong way to look at it. If you didn't make money, you're the failure because your fans showed up, doubled your sales, and gave it rave reviews. Fuck off. Fuck right off with that shit. Fuck you. Fuck That's you. Just, it's fucking crazy, it's, bro. It's dumb, bro. It's gaslighting. It's manipulative. And, uh, you know, if I, if I was the and fans of this And how does the stuff, dev feel? Like, how do the dumb. devs feel? They make a game that goes out. Maybe the project management side was dog shit, but the devs, the devs pulled off, at the end of the day, like you said, a game that did very well critically. Fans, yep. fans thought it was fantastic. So they, made, they, they successfully did it. Making a very good video game, that could be pretty fucking difficult work. They make that happen. That goes out, and then and then the boss comes in and says, "Game was a failure," and you're like, "We sold two million copies, and everyone loved it. Yeah, what dude. are you talking about? It was a failure. Is that is that our failure? 
Is that our whose failure are we talking about here? Where's the buck stopping Correct. on this on this shit? Where is the buck Correct. stopping? Well, we know where it stopped, bro. <laughs> so it is what it is. Uh, speaking of the buck stopping, Microsoft is finally cracking down on people stacking enough Game Pass months to make it to the retirement uh, via discounted cards and other promotions. It was kind of a meme for a long time where people had racked up multiple years of Game Pass. There was somebody I know on, on socials that has 11 years of, of Game Pass that they got for like a dollar a month for 11 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> so much Game Pass! For zero dollars. Oh, uh, and so they, Microsoft finally said, all right, you know, we promoted that enough. We should probably claw that back a little bit. So uh, it took a while, but they finally decided to do it, put the clamps on it in most regions, uh, locking it down. It's, I mean, they, it's like they locked it down, but I'm going to be honest, it's still very generous, to 36 months. So if you get promotional discounts and you stock well, up 36 months... That's pretty fucking good. I don't think anyone going to complain about being able to stack three years worth of Game Pass at a discount. The only, there's only a few countries in which this does not apply to, uh, and in these countries, uh, the uh, limit is 13 months, and that's because the base cost in those regions are already like 50% or less than the other prominent regions. And so the price is already so low that Microsoft can't take the hit of them going out and getting a discount for three years. They just couldn't make the service work in those regions. So it's only a handful of countries that are in that. Otherwise, yeah, 36 months. But they had finally, they finally did it. And that's going to wrap up video game stuff, which means Mr. Black, it is time to sell out to the folks at home with another subscription for all that fatigue. Uh, patreon.com slash lag TV head on over there uh, throw the money at the screen and uh, yeah if you want to take it a step further um, you can grab our, our sponsor Nord VPN head on over there nordvpn.com slash OTT get yourself a two year subscription get a massive discount plus four extra months bringing down your monthly average even more to less than half a cup of coffee a month at Starbucks. Guys, stay safe, stay anonymous on the internet. Watch different regions of Netflix and other streaming services just at the click of a button. It's that simple. It's that easy. You can use up to six simultaneous devices. 30-day money-back guarantee if you don't like it for any reason. Say you wake up one morning and go, you know what? I don't want that dang subscription anymore. Within 30 days, you can get your money back. But chances are you're going to wake up and you're going to go, I'm so freaking happy that I got myself that NordVPN subscription because I'm going to mask my IP and I'm going to unlock content on the internet that I normally couldn't watch because my government sucks. <laughs> so head on over to nordvpn.com slash OTT. And uh, get yourself that. Link will also be in the description of this YouTube video. That's it. And now it's time for... Movies and TV. Margot Robbie is just chasing down all the IPs for movies now, Mr. Black. After uh, Barbie did incredibly well, and that's in the understatement of the year, uh, she started working on getting a Sims movie underway. And now... She is apparently tracking down a team, an Avengers team, if you will, to come together to create a Monopoly movie. So now that Monopoly, uh, the, the licensing has eased up on it, there's a lot of people coming in trying to do more and more Monopoly stuff. That's where, you know, we talked about it last podcast, about the Monopoly game, Monopoly Go, making like six trillion bajillion dollars, the most downloaded game <laughs> in like the last year. So now Margot is coming in and saying, you know what? It's, it's time. It's time for a movie. Uh, and, uh, just like with Barbie, I couldn't in a million years imagine what the fuck a Monopoly movie looks like, and so, yeah, sure, okay. I'm there I for I've never watched Barbie, and I never will. <laughs> I gotta be Ever. honest, it was a perfectly fine movie. There was nothing wrong with it. It was an entertaining movie. Uh, it was, it was, like, um, visually really cool. Like, they did a really, really cool stuff with, uh, a lot with of visuals really cool and stuff. visually movies out there that, that isn't uh, Barbie, but, so. Uh, but, it. yeah, you know, uh, it was, it was fine, and I, and I gotta I say. I like, listening to men getting bashed for fucking two hours, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm good, thank you, though. <laughs> 
it wasn't Thanks. even that. But it wasn't that much oh, men bashing. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. I mean, I watched it. I know how much men bashing was in the movie. It was, it was like, it's there, but it's not like, I didn't leave the theater going, I'm, t I just can anyone else I beat. Like, I wasn't like crying myself to sleep or anything. Uh, but, uh, but it was, it was, it was, I can appreciate why somebody might not watch Barbie. Nevertheless, Monopoly. I don't know what the oh. fuck that looks like, but okay. This is why, I mean, I don't know if that guy that uh, played the uh, Monopoly guy in uh, in Ace Ventura, Ace Ventura is still alive. <laughs> that guy's <laughs> probably <laughs> probably not. You know, now I gotta look. No, he's probably not. He's probably not. Ace Ventura. When nature calls, specifically, I believe was uh, was the Monopoly guy. You must be the Monopoly guy. <laughs> Do not pass go. Do not Do collect, collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> Uh, let me see here. Monopoly guy. How God, how far down the casting list is he going to be? I'm just going to have to Google it. Ace Ventura when nature calls Monopoly guy. Who is the bat? Who is this guy? Okay, his name is Vincent. Vincent Cadby. Vincent Cadby. That just sounds like the character, like a character name in that. Wasn't the, wasn't the oh, bad wait. guy's is name it, Cadby? Wait. Oh, maybe. Maybe his name is Simon Callow. Simon Callow. Okay, that's him. That's him. Dude, he's still, he's still kicking, bro. He is? He's 74 years old, oh, man. Give perfect. him the job. Give perfect. him the, f I'm pretty sure that's him. What's his name? Uh, Simon. Simon. Ca uh, Simon. Bro, Cal bro, bro. No. Is that him? No, no, bro. Google is That's listening. Not him? Google is listening. I put in Simon. After oh, man. And, and it pulled up oh, Simon Callow at the top, uh, bro. Google 100 is Google's listening. 100%. Hey, Google, go fuck yourself. How about that? That's crazy. Go That's fuck crazy. yourself, bro. Nobody search for this man's Nobody's name. Nobody searching for this motherfucker. Nobody. I should be using NordVPN slash Daniel yes. hashtag OTT. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. No, that's not him. That's the bad guy. That's the bad guy from the movie. Yeah, that's why when I heard when I heard you say that guy's name. Now, hold on. I mean, yeah. Monopoly Monopoly guy from Ace Ventura. The Monopoly guy in Ace Ventura. Okay, here right, he goes. Here we go. Remember him. Michael Reed. Michael Reed uh, McKay. Michael Reed McKay. Yeah, I saw it. Just pulled him up there. Michael Reed McKay. Oh, please tell me he's alive and kicking. He's alive, bro. He, he was is. Born, he, he's 70 years old. He's even younger. This man was in X2? What? Doing what? When was his last yeah. credit? Insidious Chapter Three. Wait, what? Damn. That, okay. That was... <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh no, Army. He was in Army of the Dead in 2021. Okay. All right. I mean, he ain't looking so... like the Monopoly guy anymore. I can tell you that much. Yeah, he sure as shit not. Yeah, he no. was in. Uh, he was in the uh, Army of the Dead, the Zack Snyder movie. I don't know what he played. Um, he played no, a we, zombie. We can we can do better. We can do better than that, unfortunately. But shout out to him for being the OG yeah. Monopoly guy. <laughs> that's funny uh but yeah there you go so monopoly and and uh and then ev eventually at some point i guess the sims uh and then other than that uh just in time for the millennial nostalgia mining a new blair witch movie is on the way mr black Ooh. uh this is from uh uh is it blum blumhouse or bloom house Bl how do you it's jason yep. is it jason bloom, bloom. or blum bloom so, uh, Bloomhouse, so it's his studio that's doing it, uh, and his studio merged late, earlier this year with James Wan's Atomic Monster, and so those two studios are now one. This is not their movie, this was something that obviously, uh, Bloom had going before the, uh, the would-be merger. Uh, that being said, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's coming back, uh, and, and for those who might be like, why the fuck would they ever bring that back? Well, in case you forgot, or you were not old enough, Blair Witch took over the goddamn world 
when that movie came out. It was everywhere. People talked about the Blair Witch like it was like it was a mythical fucking creature. Uh, and it made so much money in its oh, theatrical yeah. release. It, it had a budget. Speaking of budgets, it, it had a like budget grand or some shit. below one million total. That's advertising and everything below a mil. It made over two hundred and fifty million dollars in theaters in nineteen ninety nine. <laughs> It made so much fucking money, it's nuts. Oh my god! Can you imagine being the actors who are getting paid 14 cents, and then you see the movie that you're in, with you, you know they didn't get hooked up with, like, performance pay. Back end points? No, yeah, no. No. <laughs> no. But, the, but, the, but the executive producers and stuff, bro, they're printing. They got printed. very rich. Printed money. Uh, no. And then, yeah, as Mark said, basically created the entire, or at least popularized, kickstarted the create or found footage genre yeah. of uh, of movies. You know, I think that this is actually a pretty good time. To I think do it is too. Found footage has started I, getting popular again. So yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, it's a big enough brand that like people people will get excited. We haven't had a Blair Witch for a long time. It's true. Um, you what know, does a you modern Blair during... Witch look like, bro? We're, we'll find out. I'm in, though. I'm here for it. I mean, at least it's I'll coming from that. one of the two powerhouses, right? It's basically Bloomhouse and Juan are the are the yeah. goats of horror right now. And so, you know, it ain't gonna be bad, or or it's very unlikely to be bad. And so, uh, and you know, it's also gonna have a budget of like less than twenty million dollars, and will oh, probably be... make. It'll print. Yeah, it'll print. <laughs> print. It'll print. <laughs> yeah. It'll print. Big money for yeah. sure. Uh, Bethesda's Fallout TV series launched a day early to pretty high reviews, both critically and otherwise, Mr. Black. Uh, though it's still obviously early days, it's clearly got something going for it. <laughs> um, and so I believe last time I checked, it was sitting 93% Rotten Tomatoes critics. That's high. Wow. Uh, yeah. And 85, 85 for, <laughs> for viewers? Yeah, I mean, um, I'll keep it. I'll keep it real, man. Uh, I actually thought the trailer looked pretty dope. <laughs> I thought, yeah, other I, than the lighting I, that looked like a commercial, everything else about everything else about it looked amazing. I thought they did the the costume designs, the set, yeah, all that it didn't stuff look looked. Like, yeah, it, it didn't look good. like cosplay. Like it looked like it looked like it would be something that is believable. <laughs> You know, know the, the 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 power armor dude floating down looked a little fucking bad. But and, and like other than that and the lighting, everything looked pretty dope. I liked it. I thought that it had a lot of promise. Be, you know, just based when you see that they're when they put that much attention to detail in in recreating the thing, you have to have some level of hope that they're going to like follow through on the rest. This ain't a Halo situation where they're struggling to come back from Master Cheeks. Right, like this looks like they're actually developing something that is true to the property and not just making shit up as they go Masters, along. Master, Master Cheeks. Cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> they walked into it, bro. They showed his ass on camera. They walked yeah. right into that one. But Master um, Cheeks. Master Cheeks. But uh, but yeah, so it's doing real well. Ninety three percent. It's nothing to sneeze at. Rotten Tomatoes for a video game television show. So uh, definitely, I, I now I feel like I have to try and find time to watch it uh, and give it a look-see. Uh, and uh, it sounds like this is going to be a shoe in for a follow-up season. So it looks like we're going to yeah. get more. And I think um, Amazon is trying to buy out the rights of another popular um, video game franchise. I forget what it is now. Um, I just saw the headline there. I'll have to... It's not obviously Fallout, but uh, it's some other big... So maybe it's somebody in chat will know. Um, but yeah, it's another big popular franchise. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to, uh, I'm sure, dude, now that, now that we've had a couple of, of video game titles do well, transitioning to the, the small screen, I think we're just going to mm -hmm. get more and more and more and more, at yeah. least to the ones that make sense. And we already know there's a couple of them that are kind of like semi in the works anyway. So yeah, uh, all you can hope is that they keep being bangers, but not all of them will be bangers. Some of them will be master cheeks. It's going to happen. Yeah. It's bound to happen. Uh, and then the last thing I've got here is Joker two trailer dropped last night. 
after a teaser in the middle of the day, because why not do a teaser for a teaser? It's the popular thing to do now. Um, it looked good. Did yeah. you watch the trailer for it? I did. I watched it uh, probably five or six times. So uh, what were you looking? Oh, you were looking. You were looking for the deets. Yeah, I was looking for like um, hidden shit, uh, like uh, e- Easter egg stuff, and you know, just kind of doing a so deep what dive. Were, on what it. were your I, overall thoughts uh, on it? Um, I mean, I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks like a piece of art. And, um, you know, the first, the first one blew me away. I was not expecting to like, I'm not one of these like Batman fanboys never yeah. was yeah. I think bat the whole Batman thing that what, what really turned me on to it was, uh, was Christopher Nolan's dark Knight and, uh, dark Knight rises. Um, but I mean, overall, like I like Batman, I like Joker. I'm just not one of those diehard fans. Yeah, but my God, the property, what what they did with Joker and the realism of it, I really just connected with. I just thought it was so well done. It was thought provoking. It was smart. Dude, Joaquin wasn't Phoenix like car- did yeah, the, the build up to becoming the crazy guy. Man, so was, fucking that dude is the, a the different acting, animal. Oscar worthy, fucking uh, the, the 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 everything. The 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 whole film was a masterpiece. It really truly was. I I know. For the ones that people want the like comic fucking bookie. rip on on that movie for some reason, like they well like because they... oh because those are in uh, those are non intelligent people that just want to see Ben Affleck go around and and be in bad CGI and you know and fight people really slowly. That's what they want to see. Digitally removed which, by the way, mustache, Henry Cavill. Yeah. <laughs> which, by the way, you know I do like Ben Affleck as as Batman. I I yes. I, I did enjoy it. Um, I do I did enjoy him in that role. Yeah. This is just a different take. There isn't people aren't running around with superpowers and blowing up the the fucking city and fighting big aliens and flying around all over the place. This was very intimate. It was a psychological thriller. Um I loved it. And now they're they're continuing that because it seems like the whole thing might be happening in his mind, like, you know, like he's just or parts doing that of it thing anyway, again, right? Yeah. At least parts of it, right? Um and we get to we get to uh, see him meet Harley Quinn and they get to you know he gets to have somebody to be crazy with and i absolutely love lady gaga as an actress i think she's a far more i think she's far better off in films like this than she is doing pop music i think it's it's i just i everything that she touches like i haven't seen her her latest one with um adam driver whether it's like an italian mob thing or whatever i i forget what that's called i didn't see that but her in um, uh, the 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 movie with Bradley Cooper, uh, A Star Is Born. Yeah, fantastic. She's gonna she's gonna come into this, and it's a musical, which we didn't really get to hear that much music. There, they played like a little, a little thing. We didn't even get to hear her her sing. We got to hear her voice. Um, but I I think that it is going to be, yeah, House of Gucci. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't see that one, but I I think I watched um, that I think movie actually. Gonna, oh, you did. Yeah, it's good. I uh yeah. I think um I think she's going to do amazing. And Joaquin Phoenix is Joaquin Phoenix. I mean, he's just and and I know he always said he'd never do Another sequels. One? Yeah. But, you know, I think they paid him like a 50 million bucks or something absolutely astronomical to do this. First movie made a billion dollars, bro. This one's going to make another billion, billion dollars. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And uh is it going to be for everybody? No. It's a musical. It's a musical, but but, but I, I feel like that's in, such a dangerous thing to call it because I know it is a musical, but obviously this isn't like a Disney fucking musical. No, right? This is no. a yeah. They're going to be pushing closer to you know how far can we how close can we get to art house without not being able to make a billion La La dollars. Land. It reminded me of La La Land. Like watching the trailer, it was very La La Land with uh, Ryan yeah, Gosling. Yeah, true, and, uh, true. Yeah, yeah. It just felt like that, but in a much, in, but in the that world, um, and they kept the same cinematography, the the same type. Like it still feels like we're gonna be where we were with the first Joker, but mm-hmm. we're but his mind is turning it into uh, some sort of musical or whatever. I, well, I see, think it's another dude, step further into madness, right? He's falling yes. further into the crazy. I love he, it, and he's leaning I, more into it. I absolutely and, fucking. 
Even it, though dude. it seems like an obvious shot. Still, the shot at the end of the trailer with the lipstick on the fucking screen Cinema. and he smiles and it's just this. Cinema. It seemed, it's almost, it, when you see it, on one hand you're like, who the fuck thinks of that? On the other hand, it feels like a, a, a trope, but they, they pull it off and it looks fucking crazy good. And like Joaquin standing there in the rain, in the jail yard, chained up. Yeah. Going from like crying into laughing, the typical because you know we we know that like in his in this universe the character it's like a medical mental medical yes. disorder in which he laughs uncontrollably, but it feels yeah. like some of this now is is ownership of the laughter now where he's Correct. leaning into it like when which he is a, when he did the smile at the end it was almost yeah. like he was he's coming he into was, it you, he was coming into it it was like yeah. he, he was actually smiling he's yes. like oh. You know, and you could, that's acting, bro. Yeah. I, that whole, that whole, the music that they had, the way that he looked at her and then looked at the lipstick and then looked at her again and, and it just slowly started to smile like that Joker and just the way that they did the effects with the, with the lipstick to kind of then go around both lips yeah. and it kind of went up. But dude, cinema, that's art. When the, when the trailer that's started art. and I, I had heard goosebumps. <laughs> Wow. Like, <laughs> yeah. like my god this is fantastic wow look at this when i uh when the, when the trailer started i and i heard the first two uh piano notes and i knew it was i knew what song it was immediately just off the first two yeah. keys which by the way is not easy to do like not every song even if a song is recognizable being able to still play the note at a right register to to have it dawn on people what song is playing is like a, a total it's like it's a whole fucking thing. But when they when he played that, I was like, oh, this is where they're going. Yep. This is what we're I doing. We're going down this yeah. road. And uh, I'm fucking with it. And I'm fucking with it hard. And and Lady yep. Gaga, I agree. I think she's a phenomenal actress. I think she's an artist in general. She did yeah. like many people, she did pop music because that's what made her money. But she's a jazz singer. And if you've ever heard yeah. her do jazz, like she did the uh, album with Tony Bennett, like just fucking Incredible. bonkers good. Yeah. And uh and it carries over. She's she, you know, she's obviously always been a bit uh auteur or a bit eccentric. Uh and so uh acting seems like it's such just something that she's relatively naturally good at. I'm sure she obviously works very hard at it as well. Uh but in a role like this. I mean, you could, I, if you perfect. were going to pick a perf, perfect, it's perfect, perfect. And it's almost like what I like about her in, in, in these movies is uh, like she, I don't know. I don't know if it's just her ability to, it's hard for me to wrap my finger around what I'm trying to say. There is an innocence to Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. There is this, um, it's almost like she surrenders to what she's doing fully. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and she's almost, you can tell she's soaking up the knowledge she's soaking up. She's a student of the game, but yet one that already, it's almost like, it's almost like she's an amateur, but she's, but she's, she's not. It's, she's it's an, really she's an amateur who can already take a game or two off of, off of a pro. Yeah, she's it's, still it's, learning. It's really like she's bizarre. still learning from the pro, but she's got the skills to still take a game off of them already. And and yeah, so like, like it, yeah. She when she's in like I mean you know Bradley Cooper's a good actor. Yes, you know Joaquin Phoenix an even better one. Yeah. And I think that that these actors and actresses are gonna level her up. It's like yes. she can she can match. She can the, rise the, to the occasion. She can if rise you will. to the occasion. Yes, and it's like there's a lot of actor actors and actresses. That they just feel out of place, like when 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 they're kind of getting their start, and they're with really fucking good actors and actresses, yeah, yeah. and and you're you're with like Oscar worthy people that like that that acting is quite literally their life. Like and we're not talking some shitty action star that can go through the tropes. We're talking people that are like very layered, very depth. Yeah, and she just surrenders herself, and it's like she just. I don't know, man. There's something about it. It's like I almost root for her when I watch her when I watch her in this. 
And I can, uh, I just identify <laughs> with how she does things. I, I don't know. I like and her you know, a lot. You know what's kind of funny about it too is that is that her music persona is so wild and out there, and what she wears and and whatnot all yes. the time is so out there that when she's in these movies and she's stripped of all of it, she disappears yes. into the movie. It's hard yeah. to recognize her as Lady Gaga. Correct. You don't yeah. see her on face value. You almost have, if nobody told you that was Lady Gaga. Some people might actually have a hard time yeah. recognizing that that's who you're watching on the screen. So it's like almost a almost a benefit that she is so loud and out there and wild in the music side because then the movies you strip all that off of her yeah. and she just looks like any other person and and which is helpful because then you don't feel like you're watching Lady Gaga in a no, movie you per se, you you can no. let go of that, right? It's it's yeah. not like some other actors where you know, God bless him, I love him, and he, I think he's he's becoming a really great actor. But like Dave Batista, is hard to not look at Dave Batista Dave and Batista. see Dave Batista. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just the reality. That's yeah. why he's wearing weird eccentric little like eyeglasses Correct. now and stuff. He, he's and growing his hair out a bit, and where he's yeah. trying, he's trying yeah. to get rid of. Big yes. burly meh, tattooed yeah. bro, um, yeah. and I think it's working for him. He's getting there, and I think he's a great yeah. actor. But in her case, she's already there. She just has to take the song and dance off. Yeah, I, you know, coincidentally, and then there you have it. You've got somebody that yeah. can that, that can melt into the movie or or blend into the movie. So I'm I'm looking forward to that movie a lot. I think it's going to be fantastic. Um, uh, it takes balls to do a musical. To a sequel for a sequel to a movie like Joker, uh, and so I'm definitely uh, I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to seeing that when it arrives. And that's all I've got for movies and TV. Unless you've got anything else, no nope, movies and TV. It. Which means it. it's time to move on to tech support. Patreon.com. Slash lag TV is the place to go if you'd like to financially support the podcast. Uh, for five dollars or more a month, you get a couple of perks. Chiefly, you can ask us a question on a post that we put up for the podcast called Tech Support, where uh, you can give us questions on that post in the comments on Patreon, and we give you answers in the time that we have. Let's see what we've got here. David asks, did you guys catch the eclipse in New Brunswick? Well, I definitely didn't yes. drive to New Brunswick. Oh, I caught it here. Caught it here. Uh, yeah. He said, I drove 150 kilometers to Delhi, Ontario, and it was in, uh, an incredible experience. So glad I didn't uh, go to Niagara to get shit on with the clouds and traffic. That's the thing about these, is that you like, weather, you just, we got lucky here. I mean, we didn't have, we didn't have total coverage. We had 95% here in Halifax. Um... The last total one that went through here, Dad was a young lad when that last happened. And we were in the path of totality, and so he got to experience that when he was uh, a, young, a young lad. Uh, but yeah, we had 95%, which is, you know, enough to dim the lights a little bit, but you don't get, like, the flat-out yeah, fucking darkness, nighttime yeah. Uh, effect. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's a... It's, it, it's, it's a the total, the path of totality, if you can get it on a clear day, that's definitely a once in a lifetime kind of experience. You see the light, like somebody flips a light switch on Earth, <laughs> and just goes off, uh, is fucking nutty. And to be able to, even for a short time through those glasses, see this ring of fire around the moon, um... Sometimes it's hard to remember that we're on a planet floating in the fucking universe. And so when you have that happen, where you're reminded when the moon as a celestial body eclipses the fucking sun and blocks all the light, um, you know, and coincidentally, it's the same distance from us as it is the size. It all works out to just be this perfect eclipse is nutty. And it reminds you that we are on a ball floating around in fucking space, <laughs> just just chilling. Uh, and, uh, and and really, for a lot of people, it's quite a quite an experience, to say the least. So yeah, I mean, we had a good time here. We had the glasses out, um, and uh, and got to got to look at that, and and it was fun. It was fun. The birds are uh, always confused. The birds think it's nighttime. Like you'll notice them landing and like going into bushes and shit because they they have they, like they see the lights going down and they're like, what the fuck? 
It's like, the sun only just came out, what the fuck is happening? Uh, they're all confused, they're squawking and shit. Uh, and then, uh, and then the light come back on, and then they all go flying around again, and they're all confused. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, that's what we did. You guys, I'm assuming you guys also took a yeah, peek? Yeah, 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 we, we did. We had those glasses and stuff. We just got to sit right on the back deck, and we had yeah. perfect view. It was completely clear, so. Yeah, we got super was, lucky, for sure. Yeah, it was like, uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't see it when it was at, like, its peak peak. It was about 85% yeah, covered. Yeah, yeah. Because I could just tell because I was streaming and then it would just you start to get dark. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I was like, whoa. So then I went upstairs and it was it was cool. It was cool. Yeah, it's it's cool. And lots of amazing, obviously, you know, since the last time this happened, camera technology. Oh yeah. Gotten a lot better. Yeah. And so there are some there are some spectacular pictures that people have, have caught, you know, multiple exposures and things like that, and uh and uh, really impressive stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, we didn't get total, total, uh, total coverage, but we got 95% and, and thankfully no clouds, which was given how much cloud we've had here recently, that was very serendipitous, uh, to say the least. Um, Jackie, can we chat about Trudeau? Yay or nay? I mean, we can, and we have, uh, the consensus here in the podcast is he, he needs to go <laughs> and yep. sooner, preferably sooner rather than yep. later. Uh, I mean, everyone knew that their motion to to call an early election was not going to happen, but that was a political play to try and rile up the voting base to, you know, just. It was political theater, but but in a perfect world, would we be able to press the fast forward button and not have to, like, drag this rest of this out? Because we all know he's not going to stay. Everyone knows he's out. Whether you want the conservatives or not, or if you agree with the their platform in in its it's entirety or whatever, it doesn't matter. He's gone, bro. Trudeau, and and not only that, but like the 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 liberals don't have a replacement. Like the voting the voting internal of the liberal party, Trudeau is like thirteen percent. The next best person is like seventeen or eighteen percent. Like that's what they're working with. They don't have their own party doesn't have a replacement for Justin Trudeau. And Trudeau is never getting back in. So the they're they're fucked. And and the way that they're going, it's like they it's like they don't want to get back in. Like the stuff they keep doing, it's like the antithesis yeah. of what would actually allow them to stay in on like a hope and a prayer. It's like they're trying to get themselves put out. And not just out. We're on the brink of looking at the first majority government in a hot minute. Because yes. of what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and majority governments, like anything, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Sometimes and it's, enti- it's bad. And it's, and it's entirely based on policy because when you have majority yeah. and you basically get to do all, it's not like they get to do anything they want, but they can push a lot of stuff through that they wouldn't otherwise. And again, it's kind of like it's kind of like a benevolent dictator situation. Dictators are great if they're benevolent. But if they're if they're not, uh oh, <laughs> you're in some you're in some shit, and uh, I don't think we've had very many positive majority governments in Canada. Most of them turn out to be kind of harmful, um, and it's usually because it's coming off the back of a really divisive time. And so the the stuff that they put in place if they get majority is like they just fucking go all the way the other end. Like there's no measured anything because they've got they've been given free reign to do whatever because the 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 populace is like fucking oh my god please and then we move to majority government and those guys they they never go okay well let's just you know we can do whatever we want but let's you know let's take it a fucking step at a time boys we got four years. We get, you know, we get some time here. They're like, nah, fuck that. Foot on the fucking gas, all gas, no brakes. And they just fucking full send off the fucking ramp like the Duke's a hazard. Uh, and so am I looking forward to a possible majority government of any kind? No. It just feels like a gamble. And the last thing we need right now, if I'm going to be, if I'm keeping it honest, the last thing we need is a gamble. Here, we need stability. St- st- whatever form that comes in, we just need to calm the fuck down and take a breather. Would be helpful. Um, will that happen with a majority? Probably not. I have a sneaking suspicion it's going to be a fucking, a fucking all hands on deck. Some of it we're going to like. 
some of it we're probably not going to be big fans of. Um, and that's just what happens with a, a majority. But it's true. Trudeau needs to get the fuck out of uh, of office. It's just it's a it's a catastrophic failure on a number of of reasons. Oh yeah, uh, we don't even have we don't even have the time. We don't have the to time for that. The amount. I'll keep my 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 comments about Trudeau real light. He's a dipshit, and I can't wait for him to get the fuck out of office. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, yeah, he's he's uh. Bit of an idiot. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, Roran, that's a great question. Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, well, it's not that I don't know. I, I do know. Mr. Black did not play uh, Baldur's Gate 3, so that Mary Fuck Kill would mean absolutely nothing to him. Um, I'll give you mine, though. He's saying Shadowheart, Carlac, and, and uh, Isabel. Um, I mean, you gotta marry Carlac. You gotta you gotta go with with uh, fucking Shadowheart and Isabel. Gotta get gotta get sent. I'm sorry, Isabel. Um, maybe a question. Uh, ah, okay. Well, and this is another follow up for Warren. We, this one might be more more doable. Uh, what is a movie trailer that you may be excited for, but then you see a certain director? Uh, is is heading the film, and all of a sudden the movie that you were excited for, you now do a 180 after you discover who's directing it. Has that ever happened to you, Mr. Black? Where you've saw a trailer and you're like, yeah, okay, and then you see who's directing it and you're like, eh, okay, maybe not. And, and Roran is saying for him that's M Night Shyamalan Ding Dong. Ooh. The plot twist is he is the director. Ooh, that's actually a, <laughs> that's a that's actually a really good answer. That would be mine. At this point, if M. Night Shyamalan is directing it, even if the trailer looked okay, my immediate my immediate knee jerk mm. reaction is, ah, maybe no. Yeah. Damn, that's such a good one. Um, I'm gonna go with M. Night Shyamalan as well, because even if he didn't tell me that. I probably would have came to that conclusion because he is so hit or miss. Like, I don't, I don't like if I, when I hear M night Shyamalan, I don't get excited anymore, but I'll get excited if I watch a really good trailer and then it says it's from M night Shyamalan. And then I got to sit there and I got to think, all right, is this the one? Is this back to form or is this not back to form? I don't know. I'm a little hesitant. I'll go with M Night Shyamalan. I think that's a. I think that is a pretty, a pretty good one. It's either that or Zack Snyder. One of the two. Because I'm not a like he's hit or miss for me as well. But yeah, I'll, I'll go I, M Night Shyamalan. I I I, I don't. It's. Hmm. Because there are cer there are certain big directors out there, like a Nolan. I'm gonna, you know, I don't. Yeah. yeah I feel good about it. You know, a fucking, um, uh, Steven Spielberg. I'm gonna feel good about it. You know, a uh, fucking Quentin Tarantino. I'm gonna feel good about it. You know, like they, they, there's there's just certain, you know, yeah. Denise now. You know, Mark, I'm gonna feel pretty good about it. Mark Mark said Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> Well, Kathleen Kennedy's not a director. No, no, but if her name is attached to it, I'm probably also having a bit of a bad oh, knee-jerk okay. reaction. Well, I mean, yeah, but yeah, I, I would say M. I, I think M. Knight's a good a good choice, um, for sure. Who is it that who is that did who who did? Um, I should remember this. That did uh, the Transformers movies, and he has like 13 more written. Oh, Michael Bay. Michael, Michael Bay. Bay. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one too. Yeah, Michael Michael Bay and M Night. You know, I think. the thing I, the thing is is with Michael Bay, I actually think Michael Bay is a pretty consistent director. It's just he consistently makes the same stuff, and yeah. it's 
if you're into Michael Bay, if you're into hot chicks and explosions and slow motion, then you're gonna like. You're you're just gonna like. I mean, uh, I'm into I'm in, I'm in all know? of those I'm things. All but, of those but, things. But when right? I watch but, his movies, I'm like, ah, huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I really watch any of uh, of Michael Bay's films, and I and I and I finish it, and I go, that movie was absolute unadulterated trash. And the only time I True. ever really felt that way was like Transformers, you know. But like you kind of yeah. know what you're getting yourself into when you're at Transformers 19, you know. You kind of you, you figure you figure it out. But with Michael Bay, like I go in, I would say I'm a casual Michael Bay fan, you know. I don't get like excited when I hear he's coming out with a movie, but I'll go see it. And typically, his shit is going right to Netflix these days. So, you know, I can pretty much watch it at home. And if I'm not spending money on it on the th- in the theater, I tend to like it even a little bit more. So, I'm still going M Night Shyamalan because yeah. that right there, he is. You know, you see a fantastic trailer, and you're like, oh boy. You see M Night Shyamalan, you're like, oh boy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you know, where's this gonna go? You know, <laughs> what's the twist gonna be? And yeah. It's almost never a good one. Uh, Marky Mark asks, suppose you had to pick a country in Europe to live in, which one would you pick? Mm. Apparently Finland for like the millionth year in a row is the happiest place in the world. Yeah, that's because of their, um, I think that's part of their, their economic structure that they have there. Well, whatever the reason is, if it's the happiest place in the world, it seems like a relatively safe bet anyway. And it's not like it's a, yeah. it's not like it's uh you know, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty country as well. Uh, but um, I mean, other, other than that, I mean, if I had to, if I had to pick something else, um, I mean, Switzerland's a beautiful fucking I was, country. Yeah. I, I, I was either going to pick Switzerland or Greece. Greece is, oh, Greece is, no. The thing is, I've never, you know what? Fuck it. No, fuck that. Fuck both them. Well, don't fuck both them play because Greece I'd like to visit. I'm going Spain, man. I was going to say, you, Spain. yeah, you have Barcelona love for Spain. is absolutely gorgeous. It's true. Barcelona. That's where I'm going. If I had to, if I had to pick one European place, I'm moving to Barcelona. It's not even a question. Mm. Nice weather, fantastic food, beautiful women. I mean, dude, culture. I, I dude. Doesn't get any better. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You go down to Barcelona Beach, just take a walk down that bitch. That's it. Mm. You're indoctrinated. That's it. <laughs> indoctrinated. That's it. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, Jackie, that one we've answered before. Uh, let's see. Well, this one's an interesting one. So, what type of car, Mr. Black, would you have if you had to pick from the following? Which one would you select? A hybrid, a plug-in hybrid, nope. or a full nope. electric. So this is the question: is like if you can't, if you can't do like okay, full electric. Fuck a hybrid, bro. Who's buying? Who's buying a fucking hybrid? Fuck that. Me. I know you have one, but I Me. sure shit ain't. <laughs> if I'm gonna uh, go electric, I'm going electric. That, 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 well, that's just I, so mine's not plug-in. I wouldn't do a plug-in hybrid. I go from a regular hybrid straight to. Full electric. The in between doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me. No. So it's one or the other. Um, but I'm a hold on to just regular hybrid for as long as possible. Full electric, I think, is still complete and utter fucking bullshit. Um, for a great number of reasons, other than the fact that we don't have the infrastructure for it here at all. Yeah, we like, don't. We we no, just we do not. <laughs> we just do, no. do not have the infrastructure for it. You live in California. Okay. Two thumbs up. I think I think it can work here only on the basis that we have a small city, and so if you're only city are, driving, like if you're okay. city driving, you're fine, right? Yeah. Because you're going to charge it at home. You have to yeah. get a charging station. You're fine. Yeah. But if you're doing traveling, like nah. you're doing some long highway driving and shit, yeah, bro, you can't. You just can't have a full blown electric car here. It just it ain't gonna work for you. We don't have. 
And in the, win- the, the winter months here are hard on EVs. Like they like yeah. the current tech for EV. Our winter here is hard on EVs. Yep. Um, so that's another problem. Um, try plugging like if you don't have a garage, you have a port outside. Like try fucking around with plugging in your 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 electric vehicle in the middle of a snowstorm, or like after like you get home and it's snowing. I you basically never. need a garage. You basically exactly. you, you have I to have a garage. Never buy an electric vehicle without in Nova a garage. Scotia yeah. without a heated garage. Yeah. Let alone <laughs> just a garage. There yeah. needs to be heat. There needs to be a charging station in there. All right. And and you know what's it's funny? Just, Yo, that's that's a, that's a problem because what's the most you would know this? What's the most popular house we're building right now? Like like just a single family home? Yeah. What's the most top popular type? We're not they're not fully detached. No, like We're building. I mean, there's tons of townhouses, townhouses, um, triplexes, you know, the, duplexes, triplexes uh, quads, and not a lot of them uh, yeah, are being duplexes. given a. Not a, a lot garage. of them are being given a garage. Yeah, because and, they want to use the square footage for for more living space. Yeah, or or yeah. they buy a lot that they can put two duplexes on instead of one duplex. And a, yeah, yeah, because they're a lot of them are zoned for four units or whatever on a single lot, and so they go for four. So not only like we we don't not only do we not have the infrastructure for it in in for a lot of people have it in terms of a garage to make it sensible as is a lot of people uh-huh. won't even have the option to add a garage if they yeah. wanted to uh, yeah. and then you have if the adoption were to go through at the rate that they want I still think it's bullshit because I don't think our electric grid can fucking handle that shit. Because our electric grid is already fucking ass right now with the amount of people that have moved into the city. It's already strained and going out at a rate way fucking higher than it ever had when we grew up. Thanks, Justin Trudeau. (laughs) Well, that's... (laughs) Yeah, I guess tangentially, that was everyone coming here because the houses were so fucking cheap. They were escaping escaping Ontario uh, largely. When you don't want want to pause or, or slow down immigration and you just want everybody to come... Yeah, it gets to bad. Come on in. Hey, it gets bad. But yeah, we don't. Yep. So we don't. We really don't have the infrastructure. And what about like apartment buildings? What kind of power grid does an individual apartment building? So let's say it has underground parking, and you got to provide every parking spot with a fucking charging no. port. It ain't happening, bro. It's not. Happening. You're gonna have the tenants line up when they get home to no. charge their vehicles. No. You're going to have it cycled for certain times of the day where your unit is allowed to charge between the hours of 12 and 2? Like, what the, happen, fu- what the fuck are you going to do? You can't draw that much power. It's nope. The grid is not ready. The infrastructure is not there. And it. I don't think, on, I'm being honest, I don't think it's ever going to be there, bro. I think that they're going to have to come up with a lot better. I mean, for here, no. Maybe, maybe for here, not. I mean, in you know, other parts of Canada, sure. But here... No. Nah. What are they going to do with nah. apartment buildings in Toronto with vehicles and shit? I don't know, bro. I, I, I mean, I mean, think, I mean, you know, when we go, when, I mean, going full <laughs> EV is, 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 is it, it, it will happen, but we're, 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 we're a long ways out. You know, there is going to come a time. But they want to stop sales in 2035 or 2030. It ha- bro, that ain't happening. Okay. Let's just keep it a buck. That ain't happening, bro. I can't. That ain't happening. It's, Here's another thing impossible. people don't think about. How much extra weight does an EV car weigh over a gas vehicle? Yeah. On average, it's over 30% more weight. So yeah. think about parking garages. Parking garages ready for everyone driving around on vehicles that weigh, all of a sudden your, your fucking, all of a sudden your Toyota Corolla weigh as much as a Ford F-150? Yeah, yeah weighing fucking 5,000 pounds. And now you're going to drive all of them electric? And parking in a parkade that was engineered to be, let's say, thirty percent carry more than thirty percent weight, yeah. but that was that was an allow that was an allowance for gas vehicles, not not electric. Yeah, I mean, obviously, technology is going to advance, and and <laughs> there, there there's going to come there's going to come a time I think where they'll figure it out, and I also think that there's going to come come a time where the cars are going to self charge themselves. It's just a matter of like when I we're so far out of the technology, and uh, you know. I think but everything this, is eventually going to be powered by solar. It's, it, I mean, we're eventually going to go to crazy places, but I don't think in our lifetime, probably when we're when when we're like in our seventies or eighties, this is when we're going to start to see some really big advancements. But I don't think anytime soon, bro. 
I yeah, because did you? It's just there's so many fucking just the infrastructure hurdles alone baffle yeah, me. It's yeah, the gigantic. roads the roads are falling apart faster because yeah. of electric vehicles, and there's yes. only like they only make up like less than twenty percent on the road now. Yeah, yeah. Imagine a hundred percent. Yeah, the roads are going to be fifty percent. Power fucked, dude. Their yeah, tires yeah. wear in like a like two years for a set of tires max on a sedan. Yep. I'm still, I'm on the same tires I bought in my hybrid, which still weighs more, obviously, than a regular gas engine. My hybrid, on almost 80,000 kilometers over seven years, same tires. Damn. Electric vehicle? Two Damn. years. Damn. Money, please. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guess what? Tires? Not cheap. Because they get, you got to have better tires. You know why? Because the car weighs so much fucking more. Yeah. And so, yeah, so if I'm choosing regular ass hybrid, probably for the rest of my goddamn life, if the government will allow me, because I am not putting up with batteries that are like, I mean, replacing a battery in an electric vehicle right now is like four to seven thousand fucking dollars is absolutely insane. So I'm one, I'm holding on my current car until it explodes. It might take me out the game, mm. but I'm holding on to this fucking car until it explodes. Cause when I went in just to fish around, I think I talked about this on the podcast, but did I talk about this on the podcast? I can't remember. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. I went in. I wanted to know cause my, I'm done my financing next year. I'll own the car. Ooh. There's like 70 something, 7,500 bucks left on the car. I could buy it now if I want to, but I have a wedding ring to buy. So that's where that money goes. So smart man. <laughs> priorities. So I was like, okay, well, you know how long, and you would know this, I'm sure as well at this point, how long it takes to get a car. You're basically a year out. You buy a car and you're a model year behind because it takes you a year to get the fucking car delivered to your door. So I was like, all right, I'll go look now because my shit's going to be up next year. So I'll go look now. So I took a little drive arena and I visited, mm. visited some places. I said, I know, mm. I know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for another, another hybrid RAV like mine, just a newer model because it's got better gas mileage. It's got memory seats, which is great for M and I, because she's going to be driving and it's a nightmare. She's fucking five, two, I'm six, six. And so I was looking for that or because we got eventually family coming a, a Highlander, which is just a bigger RAV, essentially. And I wanted to see how much my car was worth, because I know the market's insane. Mine's got, I've only got 75,000 kilometers on my car. It's immaculate. Never been in an accident. And so it's the, it's the Catalina fucking wine mixer. It's been serviced at the dealership every six months for the whole time it's been owned. And so I know it's worth a lot of money. It's a RAV4. So I take it in. She goes out back. She does the spiel. First we drove, first we drove in the new RAV and I was like, yeah, it's a RAV. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. It's good. She take, goes out back, talks to the finance guy. It's my favorite part when they go out and pretend to talk about shit. And they're, I don't know what the fuck they're talking about, but it's never money. And she comes back out. Talking she, about what they're having for lunch. That's yeah. what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Come back out. Puts the paper in front of me. 23 grand. It's how much my RAV is worth right now. 23 thousand dollars which means yeah, they're gonna they sell go, it on a lot they go resell it for 40k they're gonna sell it well we'll sell it for that but they'll sell it for like 26 27 thousand dollars on the lot i'm thinking fantastic news because what i can do is simply sell them this car and then put all that money into the next car and absolutely demolish my monthly payment while getting a new car that's under warranty for another fucking like seven years Bada bing, bada boom, everyone wins. So I said, great, yep. let's run some numbers on the RAV and the, and the, and, or let's run some numbers on the Highlander because in my head I went, okay, Highlander is a $20,000 investment above the RAV for the, the hybrid Highlander. It's 20 grand more. You're going to take 15 grand off if I give it to you today. If I get this Highlander today, you're going to take the remainder of the, of the financing off. You're going to be left with about 15 grand. You're going to put that 15 grand on the Highlander. It's going to bring it down to like the $45,000 mark, which is about the pre-tax cost of a RAV4 hybrid. Mm -hmm. that, that monthly payment 
it should be around 600 bucks on a high end with the current interest and all the other fucking bullshit and, and whatnot. With nothing else, with no more money down, it should be about that. So she goes off and they talk about lunch again. And she comes back, she comes back with the paper. She slides the paper in front of me, confidently. And I'm thinking, here we go. My time is now. We're upgrading to a Highlander. I'll look down. <laughs> uh, fuck's sake, bro. I look back up. I said, I said, are we serious about this number right now? It was $900 a month on a five year lease. What? I have what nearly, this thing? I, I have nearly perfect credit. $900 a month. What was month. the interest rate they were trying to give you? Like eight. Bro, on a, on a how, how long of a lease? Five years. Are they fuck? What did they add on there? Not a, bro. They're discontinuing the Highlander after this fucking model. Nine hundred, nine hundred dollars a month. No, that no. is on a fifteen thousand dollar down payment on a twenty three thousand dollar trade in fucking Rav Four that they're gonna sell in less than seventy two hours. They will put Wait that on the second. lot and it will sell. Wait a second. This hurt my brain here. I uh, okay. How much? Bro, it hurt how mine. Much? How much is the how much is the Highlander? The Highlander. Oh, well, the, the Highlander pre-tax is sixty-two. Pre-tax is sixty-two. So sixty-two thousand dollars times that one five. That's another ninety-three. So you're looking at seventy seventy-five uh, plus sixty-two, seventy-one thousand three hundred, all in taxes. Mm. Okay, you're getting how much of a trade in? Uh, if I did it that day, it would be 15000 because of their outstanding balance. So assuming I gave them no more money and just gave gotcha. them the car, it would be yeah. $15,000. So minus fifteen grand, So 56300 And then they're going to put that at 8%. And it's $900 a month. $900 a month. The answer? You know what else? You know what no. else? Because you know how else they calculate this, of course, is because it's a lease. Is the value at end of lease, right? It's the end of life oh, value, fuck's right? Thing. Which what, it what was valued at twenty eight thousand dollars at the end of the fucking lease. So it wasn't like I mean, it's a Toyota fucking Highlander. It barely loses. Like it, it yeah. might lose at five years. It dangerous to assume it loses half its value. But let's say it does. It's twenty eight thousand dollars. So they're calculating that if they got the car back at the end of this lease in five years, they'd be able to sell yeah. it on the lot for $28,000. So they're, I'm giving them $15,000. They're going to no. sell it for $28,000. They're already nope. at 41000 just nope. in free they're and double clear. Dipping. They're no. double dipping, bro. $900 no. a month. I looked at no. her. I said, what the fuck is this number? She said, well, what did you expect it to be? Or what would you like it to be? I said, well, I'd like it to what be a dollar. What would you like it to be? I, saw, I said to her, I said, well, I'd like it to be a dollar, but we ain't getting that low today, are we? So no, I said, we you, aren't. So she said, what, do you, what, what did you think it was going to be? And I told her, I was like, the absolute high end. In fact, I went higher. I said, the absolute highest end, I thought, was 700 a month. <laughs> absolute, like, peak. Ball, like, peak 700. Yeah. She said, I'll be right back. They went to talk about lunch. Oh my God! Came back. Where did they come back? Yeah, eight ninety nine. Eight twenty. Eight ninety nine. What? From nine twenty one. Eight. Not from nine twenty one to eight ninety nine. On a lease? Are they I, fucking mentally rolled out? I said. What the? I said. We're gonna bye dip. Bye. We're gonna dip on that. Run the numbers on the Rav. Because now I'm thinking. Okay, my Rav in 2016. Was 38 pre tax. This is 42. Everything's more expensive. It's whatever. I accept that. And the interest is going to be a few points higher than it was in 2016. I accept that. I put five grand on my RAV originally. Mm. I'm about to put 15 on mm. this. It can't be more money monthly than I paid because I did a five year lease on my, my RAV as well. Because I knew I was going to go in the original one, lease, finance, out, because I knew that uh, because of the low interest and shit, 
It was whatever, and I knew I was going to keep the car for more than 10 years. Because it's a fucking goddamn Rad 4. Like, I could drive the thing into the fucking earth and sell it for good money. So, I, I was like, there's no... In my head, I'm thinking, there's literally... It's, it, it's the mathematically fucking impossible for this to cost more than my monthly payment, which at the time of lease was 450 I think 425 or 450 I can't remember now because my financing is different. Uh, now that we've flipped to finance, it's a different number. But it was about that. So it's like, there's no fucking shot. So she goes away, they talk about lunch, she comes back. Slide the paper, I look down. It's always the paper. I look back up, I said... How is that possible? That's exactly what I said. I said, how is that possible? She said, what do you mean? I said, this is more. This is more than the rab that I've got out front. And I told her how it all went out. How, what I just told you. I said, this is literally the math. The, there's no it's calculator that can math this out. It doesn't make any fucking sense. The end of life value of this rab is $23,000 or 20. What was it? Yeah, $23,000 or $24,000, the one that she was showing me, right? Same as mine. $23,000. I'm giving you fifteen. dollars That's $38,000. This is a $42,000 before tax vehicle, and you came back with, drum roll please, $530 a month. No. It was almost $100 more per month than my RAV. That's crazy talk. Does does not make sense. Dude, I don't know what I have no idea what they were doing back there. They must have added in so much random frivolous shit because that's then, what they do. They're like, okay, yeah, you're gonna need this protection thing. That's two thousand. Then you know we we got some sort of delivery thing. There's like five hundred dollars on that. Then we've got uh, we're gonna uh, put in your services here. That's that. Oh, did you uh, extended warranty? We're gonna throw that in there. Uh, we're gonna okay, yeah, we're gonna put in some some KY for you so we can get in there smooth. I do that there too. Okay, yep. No, fantastic. We're going to sell you this $28, $35,000 car for approximately $48,295. Just, here's the paper. Do you want to sign it? Do we have a deal? Bro, I don't know how the fuck... I don't, I don't know how they did it. They went to fucking... They, they, they Bro, went to the moon. Why didn't you back. just finance the car? Why are you doing lease? But typically, because the monthly payment is is too high, they also have the the um, the warranty on it is the full length of the lease as well. There's no real and when I leased before financing now is probably better. In all honesty, when I leased yeah. in 2016, it was the play. I was just interested to compare numbers because I know mm. what my lease numbers are. The finance yeah. numbers that, that I have are not going to make sense because I'm financing a car that's already mostly paid off from the lease. So yeah. I, 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 want, I needed different, I needed comparative numbers to understand where I was sitting at the moment. Because yeah. I know whatever the financing is going to be, it's going to be more money per month than a lease. And so... I mean, um, everything's negotiable, man. I know, well, it's negotiable, but, the, uh, but there I'm was the no fucking... negotiating. $900 was not going to happen. And when they Bro. came back after I said five, I said, she said, what would you like this to be about the, the RAV? And they came at like that 430 or whatever the fuck. I said, I paid 450 for mine. I'm not, I'm not buying a car on 15 grand down payment or getting this car no. for more than 450. She came back 507. I said, have a good day. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty, and you're getting the same fucking car you have now. Fuck that, bro. Keep what you have and drive that in and sa save your $500 a month. I was just or thinking, I was just thinking man, be. this car's worth a good amount of money. There is no way that I can't maybe upgrade and keep the car payment I've got per month and get something bigger for when family comes along. Because the RAV is big enough for sure uh, I mean, to, you can still to have do the that. baby just, in the, in if the if back. I, if, if, if I was in your position, I'd keep what you have, pay that off. Then oh, that's what I'm doing. You have... When you have a baby on the way, right? Wait, wait until the winter time starts to come through. Go down there. Do not lease. No, go it would in be there, a finance. Say, hey, here's my trade in. Okay. Yeah. And they're like, yo, we'll give you 20 grand. And then you'd be like, okay, let me see what you got. And then hammer on the trade in. So I'll do this deal, but I don't want 20. I want 24 or five. Yeah. And I want this and I want that because they're, they're, they're going to make their money on the resale of the car. They're going to tell you a bunch of bullshit like, oh, yeah. we have to like do a full inspection. Oh, no, we got to clean it and all this stuff. It's, it's bullshit. It's, it, dude, 
It's bullshit, it's complete right? bullshit. You just go in there and, and, and do that. that, that that's <clears throat> pretty much what I would do. Yeah. Funny enough, I mean, I haven't really talked uh, talk, talked about this, but I, I have been looking as well. Yeah. And um, as I've, I've had my car for for over seven years. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I've, I've got the itch. Mm. All right. And, um, you know, I, I, I went in to go see about trading in my car, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm not looking for another Mercedes. And, mm -hmm. to be, and to be honest, I like my car. I want to keep my car. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, to have two sports cars is just, ir it's irresponsible. So I said, okay, let me go in and see what I can trade in. So I went into Porsche and Porsche said, hey, all right, for your, for your car, which by the way, my, my car just hit 50,000 kilometers on it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's in great shape. It did have that one uh, uh, fender bender. Um, mm. So it does, it, it does have a Carfax for a piece of carbon fiber, but yeah. overall the car is in minty shape. Yeah, yeah, and it's an AMG, and they ain't making these these V8s anymore. They're going into the into the electric. So, you know, these are sought after. It's a coupe. It's it's sought after, and I've got all I got the best specs you can get for this car. Yeah, and it's it, but it, I put a lot of money into it with the tuning and the everything else. What I'm trying to say is, I went in there. You know what these fuckers offer me? They offer me up up front thirty five thousand dollars for my Benz, thirty five grand. 35 right now i'm looking I, 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 I because they asked me like hey what are you looking for for the car and i was like well i mean i don't really know they're like okay well we'll put it on an auction and uh we'll we'll, we'll, we'll see what we can get so i get a call back in like a few hours so like yeah we we got it we, we can give you 35k i laughed right made them sweat a little while they they 24 hours later 41 i said no no fuck that 48 hours later, 49. No, I'm good. No. Three hours later, ish, same day, 53. Right? So now we're going up. It started at 35. Right? Now we're going oh. all the way up to 53. Oh, right? yeah. So then I started asking around, you know, who I could sell, potentially sell the car to locally. And the only reason why I would ever trade my car in and take a lower amount than what I would get on the outside is because when you trade in your car, it goes right towards the principal yeah. of the vehicle. So you yeah. save that money on the tax, right? Yeah, yeah. And so if I'm going to get, say, 60K at a dealership, I would need to get like 70 something in the on the outside world in order for it to equate into the being yeah. the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyway, I've been, I've been talking, I, 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 I'm still like in the process. But now, and I've got my car ready, so I got my car safety. I got it serviced. I, I got a couple of new tires on in the front. And dude, I once once I took it off the out of the garage and and everything, I said, Jeff, you still love this car, man. Like, what? It, you don't need. You don't. You want. You want another toy, but you don't need another toy. This this thing is. It does everything that you want and more. You know. So, yeah. I mean, I, now I've got them sweating. I won't even say what car I was looking at. I won't even I won't even say it. But um I am I'm down, but I am I am basically I hammered these dealerships and I told the girl too when I went in there. I told her I said I'm just going to warn you. When it comes to buying a car, I'm difficult. Right? But but I'll give you, I'll tell you one thing. When I offer something and I say this is what I'll do, I'll do it. I don't mm -hmm. play no game. I don't do nothing. I don't. I, I don't do anything. She said, "Okay, that's fine." So, right now, I'm waiting to see when they come back. They offer me more, and then the car that I'm looking at, they have it way over sticker. That way over MSRP. Oh, it's, everything talking, is way over. It, that's crazy. Like almost forty-eight thousand over. Yeah, forty-eight grand over. Like you are nuts. You are yeah. absolutely nuts. There is a zero percent chance. So yeah, I feel your pain. Bro, and when you're fucking ready, when you're ready to, to, to go to war, let your boy know. I'll go oh, to war yeah. with you. Bro. I'll go to war with you. <laughs> I, she called me back. I didn't even call her back. She called me back asking if I was still interested in that Highlander. No. I didn't even, I didn't even, I, I actually felt so insulted that I didn't even bother to yeah. call her back. It's just that you can't, you can't seriously sit a customer down with a, with a $23,000 trade-in 
and then give them uh, the same vehicle in newer model year for a hundred dollars a month more after having that much of a down payment is physically no. fucking impossible. It can't be done. Dumb. It's dumb. It can't fucking be done. And then make me a wait a year no. to get my hands on it anyway. So like by no. the time I get my car, it's a, it's a model year behind. You've just reamed yep. me for a bunch of extra money. I still have to yep. drive my car for the next year, meaning that anything could happen between now and then Correct. that could fuck the car up. And, and they'll lower me it. And they'll Correct. lower it. Yeah. Of course they will. No. Because what they'll do is they'll go, yeah, yeah, we can guarantee you this price, but you got to stay within this kilometers, and it's got to be in the same condition that it's currently in right now. So God forbid something happens. Oh, you bro. know, it's just, no, fuck all that, bro. I'm, no, I'm dodged the bullet. I am shocked that 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 the car companies are allowing dealerships to do what they've been doing for the last couple of years. There's no shortage of, of parts anymore. That's not a problem. There's no computer parts shortage. There's no fucking like any weird stip there's no there's no there's no logistical fucking nightmares going on. There's nothing like that. What happened Dude, the was the dealerships are hurting, bro. The dealerships are hurting, hurting right now. and they're looking to recuperate getting reams. Correct pre-covid and they're trying yep. to make their money back and Correct. it's insane like like you yeah. said forty eight thousand over sticker price for some cars uh that you would be looking at they're the fucking the ones they're trying to sell me are over yeah. some fucking sticker price by miles the the yeah, yeah. the fucking rav4 prime was selling like last like two years ago or a year ago was selling for a hundred thousand dollars on a fifty thousand dollar car the answer is no, no. But people no. are paying it. The FOMO and is fucking not real. They, not only are they paying it, they paying it with high interest, man. It's yeah. crazy dumb. Nuts. No. Nuts. No. But can I put in can I put in a bid for which car you get next if you do decide to divest yourself sure. of the AMG? Sure. This is might not be in your wheelhouse, but if you're looking for something a little different and you're thinking, you know what? As nice as that AMG is, and it's a beautiful car. And the engine's great. It's gonna be a very sought after engine. For gear I if the car I wonder if the car you're about to say is the car I'm looking at. Okay, so no doubt it's 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 a thing. The problem is is that it's not the most reliable engine in the world, and it costs oh, a goddamn okay. fortune to repair any AMG badged engine, just like it does with BMW for similar reasons. So maybe you want something, hey, I don't know what you're looking for, but you're looking for something that clearly, one, can survive our roads. The AMG can do that because it's not sitting on the ground. So it's, it's, it, it can do that. So you want something that's maybe not ass to grass, per se. You're looking for something that can last in Canada in general. Maybe go to a track. Maybe mm. take her around a track. Maybe mm -hmm. you're thinking about a track. You're thinking, all what right. What brand, Adam? What brand? That's definitely not what you're thinking. I, it's not if, a it, if, if, no, it's not. Okay. I, I can imagine. Audi? No, it's not an Audi. I'd never suggest an Audi. Jesus Christ, who do you think? Have some respect for yourself. An Audi? Mm. Have you some don't respect. Like the, R8? the R8 is the only bordering on acceptable vehicle. Maybe the S5. Maybe. Audi is ass. Mm. You know what you want for a track car that the engine is literally bulletproof and Lotus? you'll be and more important. Yeah. And more importantly, you'll be able to actually on the track, push it around and not be terrified when you put your foot down that your car is going to fucking do a 180 out of fucking nowhere because you've got 700 brake horsepower to the rear wheels and you don't know how you're going to get traction without fucking downforce on the back of your sedan. Mm. Lotus Amira. Mm, is nice. the car is a fu it is a beautiful car it looks car like a ferrari it's got a it naturally at well it's supercharged naturally aspirated toyota camry engine that makes for 400 plus horsepower and nearly as much torques it's gorgeous to look at great zero to 60 but you can take it around a track you can forward to the floor. It doesn't give a fuck. That nose is going wherever the fuck you point it. No problems. Mm. That would be my Which selection. Motors? 
Which Lotus? The Amira, E-M-I-R-A, the Amira. And if not that, there's another, uh, if it wasn't the Amira, but I'd go for the Amira personally right now. Mm. There's the lowest, I mean, uh, the Lotus. Bro, the car that, the car, the car that I'm looking at <laughs> will shit on this car. Bro. Well, but it's, it depends. That's why I said yeah. it depends. What do you want? There's lots of cars that shit on a supercharged Toyota Camry engine that makes for 400 horsepower. Okay. There's tons of cars that can do that shit. That's why I said, are you trying to take, cause I can tell you this right now. I doubt that you're taking your AMG that has what? 700 brake horsepower after your tune. 650. Six. Yeah. Okay. Right. And it almost has as much torque, it's probably, it's probably heavy. 600 yeah. and something uh, torque foot pound of torque mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. it has no arrow so the, it's heavy and it's relying yeah. on its weight to make up for the yeah. fact that it, otherwise it had no traction and i'm sure you know this you put your foot down and don't ease up a little bit for the first couple of oh, gears yeah. off a cold start yeah. you're just peeling tires you're not fucking yeah. doing anything no unless you are a god at driving and no offense i think we both know i'm not you're not a god at driving that thing will kill you if you actually try to take it around a track at speed. It will, t mm. it will end your life. Any car that you are likely to buy, especially a Porsche, because those things are literally, I mean, some of the ones that are getting close to like a mid-engine is going to save your life. But if you get a proper over-the-rear-wheel fucking Porsche, like a G, you're thinking probably a GT3 RS or some fucking goddamn insane, over-the-top, every quite. content creator is thinking about. Not quite. Not but quite. But you're in that neck Close. of the woods. Okay. One, that, will, car, will, okay. that, that car will probably okay. die in Canada. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll tell you the car. I'll tell yeah. everybody the car I've been okay. looking at. Okay. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm looking at a Porsche GT4 RS. Oh, it's a four. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's the, it's the mid engine. Yes. Naturally aspirated. Yep. An absolute revs at 9,000 RPM thing yep. just sounds like an absolute wet dream. Yes. Yep. Um, it's, it won't, it won't kill you the same way uh, a GT3 RS will kill you. Yeah. It still, it could still kill you. Still kill you. Um, the, the 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 concern the concern that I'm having mm -hmm. is uh is our roads for obvious reasons it will and, not survive <laughs> yeah well well the thing is it, it, the thing is if I if I were to if I were to get if I were to upgrade yeah um it's 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 not a it's not a daily right the Mercedes no, of course. I can drive is a daily yeah right but yeah. You know, if you get a race car you know, you know it's you can you get, daily you know, I'm not taking you can daily store, the Lotus you know. Yeah, but you know, I I, not, I, I would want a I want a sizable upgrade, and it just okay. And the thing is, and the thing is, in what kind is, of way uh, do you upgrade? Do you want zero to sixty? You want track speed, even like, but do you want track speed that you can personally enjoy, or do you want track speed that the Stig from Top Gear could do if he got into your car and drove it for you? Because the why so many people own a Miata, for example, or an MX-5, is because they know, can I, literally foot down yes, and just yes. actually, they can max themselves out and the car out and feel that that yeah. energy. Whereas if you own a car that is going to kill you, like uh, my dream car is a is a is a like Gen Two Viper ACR, red with white yeah, with white you. stripes. Yeah, that'll straight kill that you. will kill yeah. me. Yeah, I could drive it. Yeah. But I'm not going to track it. <laughs> well, the, the the thing that I've seen about the 4RS is um it's 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 it complements the driver. It's not it's 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 not like um it gives you all the confidence in the world. I mean, Porsche mm -hmm. has the absolute best chassis in the world yeah. and the best drivable cars ever. They I mean, they had to because they, they stuck do. the engine over the real wheels for most of their existence. Yeah. They had no choice. Yeah. So for me, I would honestly, it would just be um one of these cars that I would just go for the thrill. And mm. the, the, the thing is, is the way that this car drives specifically, how it, how it's a mid engine oh, it's vehicle, car. everything is right there. Like you, you can hear the motor inside the cabinet. You can absolutely, you know, you're, you're you, every, I mean, the car is absolutely fucking nuts. It is. The problem is it's very expensive. It's over MSRP, way over MSRP. Oh yeah. And to be, to, and to be frank, I don't need the car. I'm very happy with what I have, and I'd almost be a I'd almost be scared that I regret getting rid of the car that I have because it's such a drastically different vehicle than the Porsche. 
if I could buy the Porsche without trading in the Benz, be a different story because then I could have a literal toy that I would take out once every week to go have fun with or go to the track. And then I could use my, 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 my Mercedes as a, as a daily. Um, but to basically have, you know, a, a supercar and a, and a luxury Mercedes mm. is, is too much. It's too, it's too much car. It's too much, it's too much dumb money. Um, so I, you know, I'd have to pick one or the other. Um, but it's not like I'm going to go and buy this thing tomorrow, right? No, of course I, not. I haven't even talked about this in uh, over two weeks. I've been discussing things, and um, I was going to fly out to Montreal to go to drive the car. There's only you know two of them in Canada, yeah, um, available. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's not looking good. I'm probably going to keep what I have at least for another year, and then uh, and then figure it out. But you know, who knows? I'm not really in a fantastic position basically i was getting ahead of myself i have a big refinance coming in 15 months and um i'm gonna have a fair amount of money that's 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 gonna come my way and uh i I was basically just gonna use that to to get into something new um but with the interest rates the way they are i could never pay cash for for this car so i'd have to trade in put a little bit of money down and then you know finance out the rest over you know, a couple of years or at least 15 months till I get my money out, which could stretch 18 months. Who knows? Mm. With refinances it t- mm-hmm, takes mm-hmm, a little mm-hmm. while. So I was just kind of getting ahead of myself. You know, you get a little excited. You start looking at cars. You're like, okay, maybe I can make the swing right now. You start going to rabbit hole. And then I was like, as soon as I got my Mercedes out of the thing and I got it all taken care of and clean and stuff, I'm like, Jeff, whoa, whoa, calm. Simmer, bud. Simmer. Don't do this. You- Relax. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. So who knows? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's tough. Uh, that's that's where I'm I'm at in my not that I would literally I can't I, even if I could afford it I can't physically fit in any of the cars we're talking about right now anyway. So it doesn't matter. But oh, bro, for the, me, the, the, the four RS is so nuts. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a, they're they're nutty they're nutty cars, and I love Porsche oh, so much. I love oh them. Oh my uh, god, bro, this car, bro. I would own this over the GT3 RS any day of the week from a from a from a driving standpoint from like an in city fucking well it's made know. it's it's made to be a more forgiving closer yes, to daily driving forgiving. yes it it's it, yeah. it 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 that's that's like the whole you know deal behind yeah. the, the GT4 and for it's got sure. it's got the same engine it's got the same engine it's just yeah, that yeah. the exhaust the the way that they the the way that the the, the frame of the car is that there's a there's a, a a bend in the exhaust and so you lose like it, it's it's very little horsepower it's like 15. less than ten horsepower or some shit yeah. fifteen horsepower is that what it is so, it's, it's gonna be in that neck small. of the woods just it's, from a, it's a bend something yeah. small and and uh, what people think is is they basically they they basically came up with this because they didn't want to diminish what the three RS has yeah um, they do that all they do, you know, like car they, companies they, do that all the time. Exactly, but it's the same engine. It's the same, you know. And this is stock, bro. This thing is fucking nuts. A literal rocket ship. Well, if you're buying one uh, of them, like, like anyone buying a, a a Porsche, a brand new Porsche, not an old one, but a brand new one, like not very many people are gonna like. Only an idiot would go out of their way and think that they can improve upon a fucking Porsche. I mean, like, what are you doing? Like, what kind of a... If you want to improve <laughs> upon a car, just go buy, like, a fucking... Literally anything else, and then do an engine swap and, like, fuck around with your aftermarket parts. But well, who in the fuck are you to try to improve upon a brand new fucking high-end, top-of-the-line Porsche? What you kind know. of fucking maniac? Like, imagine buying a Ferrari, like you know, four series Ferrari, and then you bring that bitch home and you're like, man, you know what this could really use? <laughs> what, are you, what are you saying? No! You could use a tune. Come Who on. Who in the Let's... fuck are you? Yeah, Come no, on, bro. man. Yeah, so oh. anyway, I need to stop talking about cars because you're going to get my fucking, my brain <laughs> uh, going again. And it's just like, well, my it, vote, my vote is, my, my, my vote's the Amira. My, that's, yeah. my, that's my vote. It wouldn't my, be. It vote. wouldn't be. It wouldn't be a big enough of an upgrade for me for me to consider it. You know, because oh, I want to feel like I'm moving up in car. Okay. And uh, you know, it's it might be a little bit of a step. I don't know. I I don't know much about the Lotus. It would track and better I, and, than your car for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean to be. I mean to be honest. I, I I was really only interested in in getting a Huracan. That's really what I wanted. But yeah, the, I, you know, I looked into it and and it's twenty. It costs. 
$2,400 each way to ship to get service because we don't have a dealer here. Of course not, because and, uh, there's not yeah. very many people crazy enough to try to drive a Lamborghini yeah. Yeah. on these and roads. Then, yeah, and then I looked at the new um, the the R8, which has the same engine as the the the, the Huracan, and and yeah, the interior is much more luxurious than the Porsche. Um, and I'm used to a luxurious um, interior because of my C class, but yeah, um, you know the my wife fucking hated the Porsche interior. She's like, Ooh, I don't like that. I'm like, Well, Kayla, it's a race car. It's not <laughs> fucking. It, you know the same. You know she's like, mm, I don't like that. I'm like, okay, all right. I mean, I get. I mean, yeah, I fucking get it. But, uh, but yeah, no. And, and then, you know, I've done, I've done a lot of work with Porsche. And so I'm trying to pull some strings to get, just get an allocation so that I don't have to pay any type of markup. But at the same time, the, the cars just aren't selling the way they used to because of no. interest rates. And I feel yeah. like if I got serious and I put in a serious offer that, um, I could you probably get, get reasonable. it. But, yeah. But yeah, it's too yeah. much money, bro. It's too much. It's, it's, it's too much. it is. I like, even if, like, much. I, even if I could afford and fit in any of these, I still feel like I would never be able to convince myself to do the thing. I just couldn't. Yeah, I no. couldn't. It's just, it's the cost of, it's like, it's just too much. I know. It's just too it's much, too much money. money. It's I too much it, fucking money. Like, I, 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 it would it. be so difficult. But what I, what I love to, yeah. little problems, I guess, you know? Yeah, what, what, I, what I love to, yeah. What I, like, uh, and, and, and Amira all day. I actually feel like I could probably fit in Amira if I tried hard enough. You but, could. You but, could. The uh, it's the eye for me. It's the you idea. You die in the viper. Oh yeah. Well, I would never track a viper. I would literally just. I would. I would drag a viper, but I would never yeah. track a viper. Fuck. I. You. Yeah. Can, you have to be a legitimate driver to do <laughs> yeah. that. Like you have to really yeah. know what the fuck you're doing. And even they are scared of a viper. Uh. But you know that's that is no. My dream car is a is a is a viper. But if I was gonna get one that I thought that I could take to a track and enjoy myself. It's always been Lotus. I've I loved the Avora. They they use the same kind of like engine. This is just the newer one. It's they literally take a Toyota Camry, slap a, a supercharger on it, and then stick it in a go kart. And then like that's mm. like and and on conceptually like horsepower doesn't mean shit. It's it's power to weight ratio, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, four hundred horsepower to some people sounds like it's not a lot, but when you put it in a car the size of a fucking Amira, yeah, when it that weighs twenty five hundred pounds, yeah, you, you're basically a, on a rocket ship. And, you know, yeah. and, and some people want zero to 60 and that's fine. I want to, I would rather be able to track a car where I say, okay, zero to 60 is great. Can I go zero to 60 in under five seconds? If so, I'm happy. What I want to know is how fast can I take that corner? Cause that's where you feel alive, bro. You feel alive in a car going around a corner. Well, you, you can when you're in a Porsche. <laughs> you can well, you feel, you feel alive. You, you might feel fucking... dead on the other side of it, but well, you feel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you're at least doing a 360. You're gonna be doing the gravitron uh, in your in your in your in your rear engine Porsche yeah, unless you've got some serious lessons to to learn yeah, how to drive it. This thing goes zero to sixty in two point eight. So I oh mean, yeah, well it's got a wing quick. on the back to make sure that the pad the weight can or that the fucking engine the can even course. you know keep yeah. it on the yeah. road uh, for sure. Is it is it, the GT four is just naturally aspirated gas? It's not it's not like electric yeah, yeah. assisted, is it? No, it's not electric. No, no, no. Because some of them, because some of them are are like are they're like regular gas engines, but then they have like each wheel has uh, like an electric motor that in between shifts that it keeps uh, it like there's a bunch of know you know cars saying. are getting fucking crazy fancy fancy with their bullshit. That's what that's what makes me excited about the Amira is it's just a fucking goddamn gas engine in the back of a car with a supercharger, and I know that I could put my foot down for 300,000 kilometers and it would not bat <laughs> an eye cuz it's a Toyota Camry engine and it would not never that, fucking man. it would yeah. never blow up. And if you're yep. a mad lad, take the supercharger off and put two fucking turbos on it and make for 625 brake horsepower and hate your life Godspeed. because yeah. you've blown your engine up in five years, but you could do it. Yep. It's the thing that you could do. But on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to end the podcast and do go do some, some Starcraft very quickly. This podcast went longer. See what happened when you talk about cars? It's a problem. I can't even afford them, but I'm going to sit here and talk about them. It's dangerous. Mm. It's dangerous, but we're gonna go. I don't past. even know if I can afford them. It's fucking interest <laughs> rates, man. It's crazy. It's absolute nutty, buddy. It's true. It's very true. But on that note, we will see you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out. And until yes. we see you, stay safe out there. Have a good one. And uh, 
don't know. Maybe maybe don't buy a car right now. <laughs> just don't. just just wait. Just wait a bit. Just wait. Yeah. Peace. Peace. Peace.